Welcome to Fenway Park here in Boston for the final game of this series between the Red Sox and their arch rivals, the New York Yankees. In the lineup, healthy is Dustin Pedroia after fouling the ball hard just above his left ankle last night. He's been such a huge force for the Red Sox this year and maybe the hottest hitter in baseball right now. Such a huge force for the Yankees recently. Alfonso Soriano is in there as the Yankees trying to win this series tonight. Welcome to Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell. It has been a circus like atmosphere to say the least surrounding Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees recently all of the biogenesis allegations and more recently all of the mudslinging between a rods camp the Yankees Major League Baseball a story that is far from over. Hi everybody and welcome to Boston Dan Schulman Kurt Schilling John Cruck with you this is a big story it's one that isn't going to go away is this a big distraction for the New York Yankees it's not not to the players all the players care about is wins and losses and if Alex Rodriguez can help them win then it's not a distraction if he quits answering questions with the media and then it lies on the, his teammates to answer for him then it becomes a distraction Alex has to stand up answer the questions and play good baseball and try to help this team win the players could care less what else is going on with him it seems though off the field like almost every Every day there are some new developments. Let's go down to Buster Olney for the latest. That's right, Dan. It's official. Alex Rodriguez is no longer on speaking terms with the Yankees front office. General Manager Brian Cashman told reporters earlier today he's not comfortable speaking with Rodriguez because the possibility of a looming lawsuit. Now, Joe Girardi, the Yankees manager, has a different perspective on this. He said, it's my job to manage Rodriguez as a player, and he thinks Rodriguez as a player has been pretty good. He says from his perspective, Rodriguez has not been a distraction, Dan. All right, Buster, thank you. But the Yankees have some work to do if they're going to make the playoffs, some ground to make up in the East and the wild card race for the Red Sox, as you can see. It's been a great season from last place last year to first place right now. And I know as a pitcher, Kurt, you would admire a team that really grinds out at best. Well, I do. They're second in the big leagues in home runs, eighth in the American League, or second in the big league in runs, eighth in the American League in home runs, which is not traditional Boston. They're, they're a team that usually mashes the ball out of the park, works pitches, works deep in the count. These are the numbers, the sabermetricians, the, the new age baseball that matter. First in the on-base percentage, first in walks, first in pitches faced, which means they're getting to the underbelly of pitching staffs, that middle relief core, faster than everybody else. You're facing the team's worst pitchers in the fifth and sixth inning instead of the seventh and eighth, and that's a big difference. They got Hiroki Kuroda out of the game of the sixth inning yesterday. They'll try to do the same, have some success against CC Sabathia tonight. The Red Sox will send Ryan Dempster to the mound as he looks to beat the Yankees for the first time in his major league career. Alex Rodriguez is in there, batting fifth. Yankees Red Sox next.
Welcome back to Fenway Park in Boston. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, presented by Taco Bell, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. And Joe Girardi's Yankees, eight and a half back in the East, six and a half back in the wild card race. Got some work to do to get it back in things, but they have shown signs scoring a lot of runs recently as they have gotten some of their regulars back and have added Alfonso Soriano, who's had a historic week, really. 15 hits, five homers, and 18 RBIs in his last five games. Alex Rodriguez so far in this series against the Red Sox. A couple of base hits, a couple of walks, a run scored. He has struck out once. He is hitting 279 with a homer so far since rejoining the Yankees this season on the mound. Uh, a KG veteran, Kurt, and Ryan Dempster. Well, when you look at the Yankee lineup he's going against tonight, A Rod's or Soriano's 18 RBIs happened on five home runs means a lot of guys are getting on in front of him. Top of this lineup, he needs to work efficiently, keep them off the bases. He is coming off a win in Toronto in his last start. A well pitched game, excuse me, a no decision. They won in extra innings, but a very good outing. Seven innings, just one run on four hits in his last start five days ago in Toronto. Brett Gardner trying to bunt his way aboard, drops it down foul. Gardner having a good season for the Yankees. It's been one of the unsung reasons, probably has not gotten enough credit for the season he's had at Kruckie. With so many guys out of the lineup and so many unfamiliar names in there, he's been one of the steadier things about the Yankees. Yeah, he's been the one you can, him and Cano are the two that as you can really count on this season. They're the guys who've been in there for the most games. They've they played the most, and he has really become a guy that Joe Girardi can count on a leadoff spot. You remember the last couple years, he would hit leadoff against righties, ninth or eighth or ninth against lefties. This year, he's just throwing him out there for everyone and saying, go get him. And takes called strike two from Dempster. Gardner, Ichiro, and Cano here in the first inning for the Yankees. The Yankees victorious on Friday night in the opening game of this series, winning 10 to 3. The Red Sox won yesterday 6 to 1. That's a foul ball. Kurt, what's a key tonight for Ryan Dempster to be successful? Oh, getting ahead. This is a lineup a lot like the, the Red Sox lineup. They like to run pitch counts up. But but as I said earlier, Soriano's driving in eight, driven in 18 runs because the guys ahead of him are getting on base. 18 of the 22 home runs Dempster's given up this year have been solo shots, which they don't generally beat you. Unless you give up a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> Gets him for out number one. He starts him out fastball away, gives him a slider split, then he comes back with a fastball. He had him look, I think, looking for that slider on the in, on the hands. If you look at the way he swung, his waist goes outside and the bat goes the other way. He was looking for something in right there. Now Ichiro. Ichiro hitting 271 on the season, closing in on a an interesting milestone, one that's getting some attention here, way more attention in Japan. As Ichiro is closing in on 4,000 hits as a professional. Something that Kreck and I have been talking about with both these pitchers tonight. He's thrown six pitches tonight. He's used all four of his pitches within those first six pitches, which is that's the challenge against these lineups is you have to break out all your stuff right from the get go. Stairs two balls in a strike. I just don't know how anyone can have a book on each year. He does everything fundamentally wrong in the batter's box. But yet the barrel gets to the ball and he gets it. He hits line drives all over the field. Now, so let me ask you a question. We were talking a little bit about this before the game off here. Let's say Ichiro started in the majors at age 20 instead of spending I think it was eight years in Japan and then coming over here. Would he be on the on the verge of 4,000 hits as a big leaguer? He probably would be but the, the concern you have is when you bring players over from a foreign country how do they adapt can they adapt quickly. You remember when he came over he was more mature than a 20 year old would be. And you see a lot Curtis seen a lot I've seen a lot of guys in the minor leagues who are exceptionally talented who can handle being away from home and being in a foreign country playing baseball at 20. How do we know if he could have handled that. And I think there's a dramatic difference with Asian players everyday players and pitchers. I think there's a dramatic difference in work habits and the way the game is for, for those two sets of players. 
Can you elaborate? What do you mean by well, that? Well, the pitchers in Japan working, throwing a lot is a is a badge of honor. Right. It's a big thing. It's important. It's almost the opposite of over here. They don't save and rest their kid. They overwork them because it's, it's seen as something to take pride in. So they come over here with these habits that don't translate to, to the major leagues. The, the, all of the throwing, mm -hmm. it doesn't work in a big league schedule. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dempster. I just strike out 27. <laughs> well, you know, it's a funny thing about him as we take another look at the pitch. Relatively late in his career, Kurt, he's striking out guys at a very high rate. Well, that's the, we'll talk about this, so that's his Vulcan changeup. That's his changeup, good downward bite in the zone. He's having to use it all, and each row is a guy who doesn't strike out a lot. So so you've got to mix and match. That's a, it was a real good two-strike pitch. You watch the, the ball coming out. He's got a, a grip that's just very different. Good down bite. What's unusual about the grip? It's I've, I've seen it one time in my career. He actually splits his middle fingers to throw the ball. And I, I guess the only way to put it is if I did that, I would hit a mascot or a fan somewhere. <laughs> No, that's more of a traditional split grip there. He throws two different ones. He throws one where he splits his middle four fingers. He throws the ball between them, which is, well, again, I've never seen anybody but him and, and Randy Tomlin, the guy that threw for the Pirates, do it. Cano rips the ball up the alley in right center field. And is into second base with a two-out double. He could still strike out 27, but he wasn't going to get Robinson Cano. I mean, here's the pitch sequence. Sorry, the fastball, he's trying to come in. This is the same thing he did against Gardner. He came in, then tried to go away. But once he got 2-0, you can't throw it. I don't care what it is. Fastball, split, changeup. So if you're looking in a zone like Cano was, he was looking middle in, trying to hit one out. He got that pitch middle in and hit that double in the gap, and now the world's hottest hitter is up. Alfonso Soriano in his last five games. 15 for 22, five home runs and 18 runs driven in. Only the third player in history to put up that many hits, homers, and RBIs in a five game stretch. Joining Willie Horton, who did it for the Tigers, and Steve Finley, who did it for the Diamondbacks. And that's what Dempster has to do right there. He has to throw balls that do not end up in the strike zone. And they talked about Soriano being more selective, and he is, but. You know, in this situation, he knows what his numbers are. He knows how many RBIs he's driven in. He's going to be over aggressive, and Dempster can't throw him a strike. Breaking ball bounces away from Salta Lamaki <laughs> Cano to third. <laughs> Meanwhile, and there's already been some booing, even when Alex Rodriguez came out in the on deck circle, they started getting on him here at Fenway Park as they have the entire weekend. Well, they, they always save their special Fenway welcome for him. <laughs> At least on the outside, it appears that Alex Rodriguez is dealing with it, managing, playing baseball, but so much swirling around him right now. As Dempster misses up and away ball two. So many extra media, so many questions being asked. The only place he can't get asked a question, unless it's by an umpire about something, is on the field. Everywhere else he goes, he goes home and watches TV. Any sports channels talking about Alex? Soriano asking Brian O'Nor about the strike zone. Does that change up? Winds up in there for strike two. One of the harder working umpires in the game, Brian O'Nor. Found one you like? I like a lot of them. I like the guys like he works hard. Drew it short. Inning over. Dempster gets out of it. Cano stranded at third. No score going to the bottom of the first. CC Sabathia to the mound for the Yankees when we come back.
Baseball is presented by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live nice. And in part by Travelocity. The world is waiting. Go and smell the roses. And Volvo. And Shulman John Truck, Kurt Schilling, sitting in for all Hershiser this week. Bulldogs, Williams Point, Little League World Series, Buster only here as well, of course. Fenway Park in Boston, the Yankees and the Red Sox. As we go to the bottom of the first, time to show you the Red Sox lineup tonight, presented by Taco Bell. Dustin Pedroia, who started the first few years of his career, couldn't buy a base hit on CC Sabathia. Now he's tearing them up over the last few years. And David Ortiz having a terrific season. Another home run yesterday, leading the Red Sox and batting average home runs and RBIs, facing a guy who are trying to figure it out a little more than he's had to in the past. CC Sabathia. Oh, this is a different pitcher. He's, he can still win in the big leagues. He, I thought early in the year he, he had it very much figured out. He's gone through a real rough stretch here. This is what happens when you start to lose that 98 99 and you become a 91 to 93 pitcher. He doesn't have the ability to make hitters swing and miss like he used to. And it's showing in his pitch counts and, and the, not being able to get into the seventh and eighth. Jacoby Ellsbury leads it off for the Red Sox. The center fielder hitting just a couple of ticks below 300 and leading the major leagues in stolen bases with 44. He's been caught only four times. And what a difference a year makes for the Red Sox to have Ellsbury, Pedroia, and Ortiz largely healthy last year after all three of them dealt with fairly to severely significant injuries last year. One of the big reasons why they're second in the majors in runs per game this year, behind only the Tigers. And they're barely behind the Tigers. John Farrell, first year as manager of the Red Sox, and sees his team in first place right now. 73 and 52, a game and a half up on Tampa Bay. The Rays winning today. Getting a walk-off home run from Jose Lobaton to beat the Blue Jays. So the Rays are right there, just a game and a half back. And that's the pitch right there, Dan, that, that Joe Girardi told us. If his sinker and, and changeup are working, and he's not cutting across his fastball, and he's cut across a couple in this bat at bat to Ellsbury. And doesn't get a borderline call. Sabathia walked a career high tying six on Tuesday against the Angels, although he did get the win, and he walks the leadoff man here tonight. And immediately the cat and mouse game will begin with a major league leader been stolen the bases at first base. And it's what Kirk talked about in the open. He's thrown five pitches in the Red Sox and Ellsbury's on first base without having to swing. They they just don't swing at bad pitches. Or borderline pitches until they have to swing. Shane Victorino. Victorino's been bothered by a sore right hamstring recently. He would be hitting right handed tonight, anyways, obviously against Sabathia, but he's been hitting right handed exclusively lately, even against right handed pitchers. As he feels more comfortable batting from that side of the plate. In for a strike, one and one. Brian Butterfield flashing the signs down at third base. Up and away ball two. With a lineup like this, Kurt, you, you played for a team that took a lot of pitches when you played in Boston. Do they have guys that that's their MO, or is it something they emphasize to make guys play like that? It is something they value in rookie ball. It's something you, you come to the big leagues understanding the value of the importance of an at bat is to be on first base. Doesn't matter how you do it. Under the glove of Nunez into left field, a base hit. After walking Ellsbury, Victorino had to think that yeah, he has to throw me a fastball somewhere over the center of the plate. And he hits that ball right right past Nunez, and that's because he has to cheat towards second base because of the speed of Ellsbury in case he gets a steal. And that's what, you know, if you're going in the clubhouse after the game, you're thinking Ellsbury for that single. 
So an early jam here for Sabathia in the first two on nobody out. Now the heart and soul of the Red Sox Dustin Pedroia. Shows bunt takes a strike. Pedroia scuffling a little bit lately but still hitting 292 on the season. Has missed only one game all year when he fouled that ball off his left ankle just above his left ankle yesterday. Looked like it might be serious. Stayed in the game for a while came out for the last inning but back in there tonight. And as we showed you off the top of the show a guy who's torn up Sabathi in the last three years. Little looper caught by Soriano out in shallow left center for out number one. One of the things when you lose your fastball is, is getting command of the ball in. When you go in, you have to be tight. He did. He got in on a fastball hitter. Very hard to do that. Petey was probably looking more out, middle out, trying to move a ball into that hole on the right side or in the shallow right. CC made a good pitch. And that's a pitch up to the Pedroia usually hammers. And that just tells you that he had to be looking at, you know, some other location other than up and in. Yeah, he, yeah, he knows it. Real happy about that, isn't it? <laughs> now Ortiz, fourth in the American League in the batting at 325. Full shift playing him to pull, but Nunez still on the shortstop side of the bag, and Arod not that far from third. Yeah, because you, Ellsbury's you can't really have a full yeah. shift with the speed of Ellsbury on second base. Alex Rodriguez has to respect the stolen base and stay closer to third. It opens up a big hole though between third and short. Fourteen. You saw the first pitch was a slider away. Fastball away for a strike. One and one. And now Nunez wants a little clarification here from Sabathia. Yeah, he forgot the signs. He's still without Derek Jeter. Still on the DL, this time nursing the calf injury. At one point, it sounded like there was a possibility Jeter could be back as early as Tuesday. He's actually eligible to come off the DL today. Joe Girardi telling us pregame that Tuesday doesn't look likely that Jeter really hasn't run the bases, turned corners yet, and, and he's still got some baseball activities in front of him before he's ready to rejoin the Yankees. Above Fenway Park here as the Yankees and Red Sox meet. They've got another three game series here in this ballpark in September. And the Yankees need every win they could muster if they're going to get back into contention. I guess right on the edge of contention right now. They're eight and a half out in the East. They're six and a half out in the wild card. But they've got a number of teams that they've got to patch if they're going to get back into that wild card race. Tampa Bay and Oakland currently holding down the wild card spots. And Baltimore, Cleveland, and Kansas City are all ahead of the Yankees as well. The only reason I don't think it's going to happen, I don't think Boston, Tampa Bay, Oakland, I don't think they're going to be able to lose, lose out. One thing the Yankees have going for them, I guess, they've got a ton of games, a ton within their own division still coming. And Baltimore and Tampa Bay are two of the teams that are trying to chase down. Johnny Gomes waiting on deck for the Red Sox. Another hitter's count. We talk about grinding out at bats, deep pitch counts. Here's Sabathi at 16. He's got one out. And this is what happens. You could throw six scoreless. He might do it, but it might be, it's going to take 122 pitches to do it at this pace. Does it wear on you mentally as much as physically? It's hard. These games are different. This is an event. This isn't a game. The Yankee Red Sox, it's just different. And it's, it's mentally taxing as much as physically. Talked about it off the top of the show. The Red Sox are about as patient as any team in baseball. Only the Twins see more pitches per plate appearance 
than the Red Sox do. That's not just taking pitches. That's doing what Ortiz is doing here, right. spoiling pitches. Well, right? this is the difference in CeCe's bat. His ability to make you swing and miss has diminished, and this is where it plays itself out. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. So the Red Sox with a big time threat against Sabathia here in the very first inning. And if numbers mean anything to you, that's that's their 210th walk after they have two strikes on them. That's that's knowing the strike zone and being very patient as a hitter. And I mean, you could see there once Ortiz got two strikes, he wasn't trying to. He was trying to hit, hit the ball hard into the outfield, but he was trying to hit it hard to left field in the outfield. He wasn't pulling off trying to hit a home run to right or trying to. You know, hit a double down a right field line. He was trying to stay inside the ball, and, and so he didn't swing and miss. Now Johnny Gomes, left fielder, getting most of his time against lefties. He's not up there trying to hit one the other way. Well, you know what, John <laughs> Farrell been here for half the season. <laughs> John Farrell and Terry Frick used to play a game when they were coaching together. They'd pick a guy before every game who was going to homer, and I guarantee you tonight on this setup that this is the guy Farrell took in the home run pool. <laughs> More balls and strikes so far from Sabathia. Ninety three miles an hour in there for strike two. You can already see from Sabathia the sweat he's worked up here in this very first inning. He's thrown 20 pitches already. I mean he's max effort almost every pitch right now because he's in such a jam and. Yeah, you know, even though the Yankees are scoring a little more runs with Soriano, they're still not an offensive juggernaut, and he knows if he lets a big inning go in the first inning, this game could be over. Now back our way. I used to say I, I had three three shots. I could go to the well three times. This is a go to the well situation. You didn't want to have to do your first one in the first inning. Mm -hmm. Well, and Chris Stewart out for a chat. Jacoby Ellsbury led off the inning. By walking Shane Victorino with a base hit under the glove of Eduardo Nunez in the left field, and then David Ortiz after a long at bat battled, walked. And the bases are loaded with the one out. Sabathia facing Gomes. Struck. Ichiro back. Ellsbury will tag it, coming to score easily. And Victorino on to third as the Red Sox have the lead. I feel the Red Sox right here. If you don't get another run in this inning, you might think it is a bad thing, but they're going to be 25 pitches. He's going to be 25 pitches deep if he can manage to get out of this inning quickly, which just still makes it a win. First and third, two down, a run in for the catcher, Jared Saltalamaki. 267, 10 homers, 32 doubles on the season. Up the middle and through a base hit. Victorino will score two to nothing Red Sox. Well, we talked about the patience of the Red Sox, but the, the patience also is as Larry Rothschild comes out to talk to CeCe. The patience is also knowing what pitch is coming and not laying off a pitch right down the middle. That's a changeup that just stayed up in the strike zone. And Saltulamaki does what he should. He hits a line drive up the middle because he's not fooled by the pitch because it was elevated. He came into the game tonight. He's allowed more first pitch hits, 35, coming tonight than anybody in the league. And that tells you from a stuff perspective, hitters are coming up to the plate and reacting to him very differently than they used to. Yeah, people have to have the misconception that being patient means taking strikes you know taking a first pitch strike or taking the first pitch regardless but you know you can also work up a pitch count by hitting that first pitch for a double somewhere that'll get him working two on two out 
two in for the Red Sox here in the first and this is Daniel Nava at first base tonight. <laughs> Mike Napoli's got a sore left heel plantar fasciitis so he's down for a few days. And Nava who plays a lot of the outfield as well. Steps in hitting 292 10 homers. And he's among the league leaders in on base percentage 378 on the season in the top 10 in the American League. Brian Honor is going to walk a new ball out to CC Sabathia with a message as well. Well, you saw the catcher, I think, got a little bit of that mm -hmm. ball or something there. So that's the umpire. Yeah. Brian Honora is a very good umpire, very hardworking umpire. He's given giving the catcher a few minutes to get some feeling back in the fingertips. Gonna brush the plate off as well. Yep. I'll keep saying I'm just glad I was left handed. <laughs> the perfect candidate to be. Yeah, a I was going to say. No disrespect but as a righty with your body type they might have stuck you back there until you proved you couldn't do it. You wouldn't want to at all. No. No. <laughs> Schilling bouncing in splitters that are coming up. No, he would have been, and... been fun to catch yeah. you hit locations. There's others it would have been a nightmare. <laughs> And the inning is over. With a long tough inning for Sabathia, the Red Sox get a couple. Alex Rodriguez will hear it as he leads off the second. Park and is sure to continue in all visiting ballparks the rest of the season as he hears a whole lot of booing from the fans here at Fenway. The occasional supporter, but not many seemingly in his corner right now.
Hmm. Well, boys, what do you think? That was interesting. Yeah, that was uh, be more interesting to see where this one is. Yeah, that one, I think I'm pretty sure that was on purpose. Yeah, you, you generally don't miss behind a hitter unless you're trying to throw at the hitter. I'm guessing he probably had expected something like that at some point. Well, this is the first time we've seen something like this since Alex Rodriguez returned, and I think we can say with some certainty what the intent was after Dempster hit him on the 3-0 pitch. Joe Girardi livid. Ryan Dempster did not get tossed out of the game. Warnings were issued to both sides by Brian Onora, so Girardi's gone. A-Rod down at first base. Dempster stays. What'd you think, guys? It was intentional as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is the big, this is the deal. The first pitch is behind him. Okay, you, I'm sending a message. I don't like what you stand for. And then he throws two more inside, and then the 3-0 pitch, he throws one, yeah. you know, not not up at his head. Hit him in the elbow guard and then in the ribs. But, you know, to me, it's ridiculous. You had your chance, the first pitch, to send a message. Don't send it on the fourth one. You know, and, and look, I know they warned both teams. But if I'm CC Sabathia, I'm sending a message back because I, I, I'm not a fan of what just happened right there. Even, though, Ryan even though he'll get tossed. CC will I, get tossed. I, well, I think there's going to be a time. Yeah. There'll be a time. Either that or they have someone designated in the bullpen as their designated hitter that's going to come in and drill someone because you just can't have that in this game. I think there should have been a warning well before the third, fourth pitch was thrown. Well, umpires were given the leeway to eject. On, on their own call. That was intentional. That's mm -hmm. what you were supposed to do is eject the pitcher and the manager for doing. You know, bigger picture than just should he have been tossed or not. We have one player hitting another player. Right. Because of what that other player is alleged to have done yep. and the impact he's had on baseball as a whole, for lack of a better term. I mean, this is this a little bit unusual. It's uncomfortable. You, yeah. you knew this was going to happen I, I, at some point. I just didn't know when. I, I, yes, we did. We kind of anticipated it would happen. But the man threw four pitches, one right. behind him, and then two in off the plate, and then he hits him on a 3-0 pitch. You know, you sent your warning the first pitch you throw it behind you. If you didn't hit him with the first pitch, then go on with the at-bat like it's any other at-bat. Two and two the count on Curtis Granderson. And now here's the thing. If one gets away from CeCe and hits one of the left-handed right. hitters for the Red Sox, yep. you know, CeCe's going to get ejected. And that, that to me, there, here's the thing I think. If you think it's intentional, and he's warned both teams, so obviously he did, I believe that the other team who hasn't done anything yet gets one shot. That's only fair. You're taking a, a weapon now away from CeCe Sabathia. Under the glove of Nava down the right field line. A-Rod will make the turn and head to third. And Granderson safely into second base. I, 
I think, well, yeah, this, I think what you've done right here, you've given some momentum. You've, you've definitely given a little different incentive, and you don't want to wake that, that, sleeping, that sleeping giant. And Joe Girardi, as you can see, I mean, he lost it on yeah. Brian Honor. And he had every right to. He, he, he should have. Yeah. should have. So A-Rod at third, Granderson at second. And there's a base hit into left center for Eduardo Nunez. Rodriguez scores, Granderson to third, and the Yankees are on the board, trailing 2-1. to one. I've been in games like this where I was on the mound being either asked to do something or being pushed to do something like that a situation call for it which you don't want to do is lose sight of what you're trying to do which is win the game this is Alex Rodriguez's 12th game since returning but this is the first time we have seen a pitcher go after him with this kind of intent seemingly go after him with this kind of intent I think you can I'll comfortably drop the seemingly I'll, I'll, I'll comfortably remove the seemingly <laughs> I'm deferring to you everything about that. that was intentional yeah. and if it, it you know we can go on and on, but if it will, did he go after any other guys who have been suspended last year? He's played pitch against Toronto. Did he go after Melky Cabrera? No, it's not Alex Rodriguez. The tough part for me, I know Ryan Dempster was thinking about that warming up for this ball game. He knew he was going to do it, and 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 it was thinking about that when he walked onto the mound for that first inning. So is the issue you guys have that he did it at all, or that he continued to try to do it after he didn't hit him with the first pitch? I think the first pitch he sent the message. Yeah. I think once you send the message, it's over. You either you had Whether your you shot, hit him or not. you right. had your shot, you yeah. didn't hit him, you threw it behind him. Okay, go on with the at bat. Lyle Overbeck. Granderson tags and the throw comes into second base. The Yankees have tied it. There, there's some luck here right now in the sense that Ryan Dempster puts eight innings on his bullpen if Brian Lenora does what he should have done, which is eject him. And these guys are a game and a half up trying to get to the postseason. That that would have been a huge mistake. But as you say, the, ne the next piece of the puzzle potentially involves CC Sabathia. Now. Whether yep. there's a response on his part after warnings yeah. of an issue, uh, I, have, I, I guarantee if there wasn't a response, I, I'm having a hard time seeing him not react. I, I think he's going to do. No one CC. That's what I mean. If there wasn't a warning given, I, you know what the response right. was going to be. But because <laughs> there have been, he has to be careful. Yeah. Chris Stewart pops it up in foul territory. Two down. You just had the feeling something would happen. It always does surrounding that man. We look back on the history of this rivalry. Something there's always something. And it generally involves a pitcher hitting a batter on the other team. Top of the order, Brett Gardner. I keep, I, I, I'm, I'm still I'm shocked he didn't get ejected. I really am. Baffling is what that is. You know, and nobody knows for sure really how the Yankees feel about Alex Rodriguez. Players on other teams have spoken out loudly about him and whether the Yankees are glad to have him back, tolerate his presence, whatever the case may be. But this could rally them around Absolutely. him a little bit. There, right? it's, it doesn't yeah. matter how you, he's your teammate. You're yeah. all wearing the same uniform. There's one thing to do to react to that. Yeah, you might not go to dinner with him after the game, but you'll fight for him on the field during it. Yep. Absolutely. Or you better. And my guess is we'll see at least one emptying of the benches and bullpens again tonight. At least one. Runner goes. And into second of base is Nunez with a stolen base. I, this is something that could fuel a team. I, I mean, yeah. this is, you know, I, I just don't understand why you would pick that time in the second inning, the leadoff hitter in the second inning, after your team just scored two runs, 
to do something like that. Well, but but it, it doesn't matter if it's a rod or not. I mean, if, you know, you he was going to bat again. Right. That, right. That's the thing that for me, if, if you're going to settle a personal vendetta, which that was for him, that's fine. Pick your spot because the game winning the game has to be the priority over everything else. But again, if he'd hit him with the first pitch, yeah, is the is the situation different? The, I don't know that anybody reacts differently. Yeah. I, I think Joe Girardi had a much better case after the fourth pitch. Yes. Yeah. But I still think he had a very strong case after the first pitch. Now, do you think the second and third pitches he tried to hit him and just missed again with those two? I, they, I don't know. He went in. Right. I didn't think he went in. He went in kind of half-heartedly. So, yeah. but the fourth one was clearly intent. So it's three and zero. I'm probably going to walk him in. Absolutely. I, may, absolutely, as, yeah, I yeah. may as well hit him. Absolutely. Yeah. Either that, or he's made a great adjustment because he hasn't thrown one in the right-handed hitter's batter's <laughs> box since. Yankees after a rod hit by a pitch have rallied to tie it here in the second runner at second two down 3 0 count on Gardner. Three zero green light for Gardner. Inning over. Sabathia back to the mound. Let's see what happens. The Yankees have tied it and it began. With Alex Rodriguez getting drilled on a 3 0 pitch by Ryan Dempster. Benches, bullpens emptied briefly. Joe Girardi ejected. The rivalry continues, and Aaron's right in the middle again. Tie game, bottom of the second. A rod drilled by Dempster. Sabathia facing Stephen Drew. And in there with a strike. So perhaps if there is to be retaliation, because warnings have been given and Sabathia doesn't want to get tossed out of the game, perhaps it'll become it will come later on, if at all. I'm picking Ortiz for that lottery. Next time up or yep. later in the game if the situation's all right. I'm gonna go with next time up. Really? So CeCe's going to get himself tossed in this game. You know what I'm looking at? I mean, we're eight and a half back. Yeah. I, I don't think you have anything to lose and everything to gain. Great stop by Overbay for out number one. 
How about you, Crocky? You, you picking Ortiz or nobody uh, or uh, someone in someone? a Red Sox uniform? I think it has to. How do you not? Do the Ortizes of the world, uh, you know, the alpha male on each team, right away when something happens, do they go, oh, man. I, I don't know if right away, but I know that after not hitting the first hitter that inning, I know Ortiz is thinking, okay, I, I think I'm probably going to be the guy. Will Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks sent down to the minors a couple of months ago after swinging the bat very poorly. Has come back swinging the bat much better. He's dumpster towels off in the in the dugout. 2-2 two -two game. Bottom of the second. Middlebrooks 10 for 23 since returning. Make it 10 for 24 after A Rod ranges to his left. Aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. Sold out Fenway Park in Boston. Final game of the series between the Yankees and the Red Sox, and already a lot of excitement here tonight. Two-two tie, bottom of the second. Back to the top of the order for Boston, Jacoby Ellsbury, who walked and scored in the first. Here's the other guy, Dan. This is two outs, and nobody on. This could be. The other shot. I don't think he risked it. This I don't early. either, but I, uh, this is the other guy, I think. Two outs, nobody on. Now, if a breaking ball should get away and hit a batter, we all shouldn't lose our no, minds no, here. No. Onora wouldn't toss him no, out. No, right, no, no, so. no. I've seen some bad umpires actually do that, really? but yeah, no. I just think the game means too much to the Yankees. And I. And if he does it, I think it's got to be late in the game. If this, if if he's comfortably in front, that's why I think they wait. And I believe me, I think there's someone in the bullpen. Every team has one. Who's that designated? Hmm. You know, you're warming up because the first guy you're going to drill. Who generally throws north of 95, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with some questionable control issues. I saw Tony Pena there, the acting manager, after Joe Girardi tossed out. Just outside, Sabathia two steps toward the third base dugout. Uh, what it's done too? what what Ryan Dempster has done. He's made his hitters uncomfortable because you have a feeling someone's going to get hit. You just don't know when. And that could be the game CC's playing. He's going to bide his time and wait. And the inning is over a good one for Sabathia. End of two at Fenway Ryan Dempster back to the mound at a 2 2 tie.
tomorrow in Baltimore. The Yankees host the Blue Jays for a doubleheader on Tuesday. Boston will head to the West Coast tomorrow morning. They'll sleep in their own beds tonight, fly tomorrow to San Francisco, and play the Giants in San Francisco tomorrow night, starting a tough week. Three in San Francisco with no off day on the travel, and then three against the Dodgers, and that will be our Sunday night game one week from tonight. The Red Sox and the Dodgers, and I know this is hard to believe, guys. The Dodgers lost to them for just the wow. ninth. For just the ninth time in their last 51 games, they lost three to two to Four the Phillies. Oh. <laughs> and congratulations to Ryan Sandberg, his mm -hmm. first win as a major league manager. I didn't know if he was ever going to get a run scored for him, much less a win, but he got one. And it just might be a little hiccup for the old Dodgers. 42 and nine huh. in their last 51 games. At 50 games, 42 and eight. That was the best streak any team had had in you 70 years. You know you're going good when a hiccup is one loss. Yeah. <laughs> Jam shot and fouled off by Ichiro. They were 32 and 40, and since then they're 40 and 9. A 10 game winning streak snapped today. And Yasiel Puig, one of the many, many reasons why the Dodgers have been the best team in baseball over the last couple of months. Sometimes you have a team that goes on a great streak, but then. I mean, they hit a, they hit a wall and they settle back a little bit. Well, was it 85 when the Tigers went 35 and five to start the 84. season? 84. 84. Yeah. I mean, that division was over in May. For them to do that, this run this late in the year, to me, is the most surprising thing. Arizona won today. I think Kershaw, Granke, Ryu. Uh, that that's there's no going to be no long losing streak for yeah. them. I don't think. And you have to remember, you know, when Puig came up and Hanley. Came back from injury and they started hitting, but you know, it's also kind of coincided when Grinky came back and settled that rotation down. We and, hear, when, and when Kenley Jansen moved into the into the in the closer we role. We heard yeah. Manningly talk about their offense. He talks about Adrian Gonzalez as as one of their potential MVP guys. This is why I hated facing Ichiro Suzuki. He's in his second at bat, he's seen 14 pitches in two at bats. Such a and, and and he might make another out, but it's going to take me 15 an innings worth of pitches to get him out twice. <laughs> <laughs> Two <laughs> things. Why would you swing at that pitch? And how did he hit it? <laughs> like there was at no point where that pitch you could think that's going to break yeah. enough to be a strike. <laughs> this was never going to be a ball. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know what that honestly is that. And then he does yeah. that. Wow. Oh, he's amazing. The athletic ability there is just breathtaking. Well, that's the split that did nothing but stay up in the air. And Suzuki thought, well, that's got to break down. But here's the beauty part. How, I guess it's, it is all hand-eye coordination because feet have nothing to do with it. Look at the feet, footwork. <laughs> I mean that's like a softball player slapping right there and that swing too. But what 3900 how many 96 Eight. between Japan and the majors seems to have worked for him. <laughs> I don't think I'd change a thing. And he can still run a little bit too. He's got 17 steals and 20 attempts this year. So Dempster will have to be aware the last 13 base stealers who have tried to steal the base with Dempster on the mound. Actually, make it 14 with Nunez tonight have been successful. That used to be something in this series. You had three or four guys to get in 40 homers. So holding, slowing the running game down was never a factor. With the way they're structured offensively now, it becomes a much more important piece to the puzzle. Yeah. The Yankees this year and, and we all know they've had a ton of injuries and played a lot of guys who normally wouldn't even have been on the team. They're 13th in the American League in runs scored 14th in home runs and dead last in slugging percentage on the season. Although with a rod back better than what they were getting at third base with Granderson back from injury and of course with the acquisition of Soriano and what he's done the last few weeks this is a better offensive team than the Yankees have had on the field for most of the season. 
Yeah, I mean that offense right there has got them eight and a half games out. Mm -hmm. This is a like you just said. This is a new offense with Soriano and Alex. You look at their numbers specifically at third and short, which of course would be A. Rod and Jeter if they were healthy. The third baseman for the Yankees on the season are hitting 218, five homers, 35 RBIs. The shortstop's almost identical 220, four homers, 35 RBIs. So getting virtually nothing from those two spots. They've got A. Rod back, hoping to get Jeter back in the next few days. And they've got Cano swinging a hot bat tonight. Had an 11 game hitting streak snap yesterday. And he's right back at it with a couple of hits in his first two at bats tonight. Now, if you're just joining us, it's been an eventful beginning to this game, as it often seems to be between these two teams, and as it often seems to be when Alex Rodriguez is in the middle of it. And the temperature in this ballpark went up in the second inning. Ryan Dempster facing A Rod. That's the first pitch. The second and third were inside, and then the 3 0 drilled him. Warnings issued. Joe Girardi livid that Dempster wasn't ejected from the game. Girardi got ejected, and you can see right there by what he did with his finger, saying he threw at him on the first three pitches and then hit him on the fourth. Girardi ejected. No retribution from CC Sabathia at this point. He's only gone an inning. Since that, maybe later, maybe not at all. We'll have to wait and see. Rodriguez didn't say a word. Went down to first base. The Yankees scored two runs in the inning to tie it. And now threatening to take the lead here in the third with Soriano up and A Rod on deck. I can't help but think what the message Alex kind of sent without by not saying anything. I mean, are you just blatantly throwing at me or are you throwing at me for something I did? And you notice ever since he's he's thrown those pitches at Alex Rodriguez, he's been in a tr in trouble ever since. So I mean, if you're gonna have the guts to, to throw at someone intentionally, you better be able to shut the other team down. Ichiro at second, Cano at first. Out of play, 0 and 2 on Soriano, and he's always been a streaky hitter. He can have an ugly couple of weeks and he can have a, a crazy couple of weeks, but I don't know that he's ever had a week like he's had this week with five homers and 18 RBIs in his last five games. I mean, he had a month in five days. He had a good month in five days. And it ain't over yet. Wouldn't chase. This is where this these games get long. These teams become challenging. He's 17 pitches into this inning. He does not have an out. He's got two runners on. Whatever your standards, Kurt, were for a good outing, would you alter them when you face the Yankees? No, no. no. I mean, you, you, you. I would always go out and go. You know, perfect game, no hitter, shutout win. And generally, with the Yankees, the perfect game was gone after one of the first three hitters. <laughs> the shutout was probably gone in the first two or three <laughs> innings. So you, you played to win. These were yeah. just, these were different games, mentally and physically. They're just different, every one of them. To right. And carrying, and Victorino racing back to make the catch. Michiro went back to tag, so he's to third. Cano back to first, and A Rod coming up for the second time.
Crowd on A-Rod not quite as loudly as they were before the first at bat. Challenge for De De I think Dempster has to go in this at bat. Has to go in this to, to get him off that ball away. Yeah, Alex was leaking out on yes, that. He, he was, was trying to catch something out front if he threw it middle in. If he stays away, Alex is going to kill him off. Fastball away to change up to slider. Slider away. And I, as, a, as a scouting report for me, facing Alex, Alex, I thought Alex was one of the biggest guessers in the game. You, you can see a lot of times he would strike out with two strikes and take a fastball down the middle, which always told me he would, I think he's a very big guesser. He, he had the athletic ability to guess, be wrong, and, and correct. I'm not so sure he's that same guy. Well, this is a perfect spot to come in. After throwing three pitches away to get the 2 1. Staying away. Now he's kind of boxed himself in here, 3 and 1. He's got a guy behind him in Granderson to hit a double off of him his last at bats. It's just, I mean, if you're Dempster, this is the pitch you want to get something going with. I don't think they're going to start Cano at first. They're going to let Alex just hit right here. I think he's looking away here. And he swings through a fastball away, three and two. The Chief did challenge him with that pitch of middle or middle away. Look at the swing. I, that, that's not a single to right field swing. He was a little tardy on it, though. Cano running. Round ball to short. Diving stop, Drew. Only play to first. Dug out nicely by Nava. A Rod retired. The end to score each hero, and the Yankees lead. Dempster after the warnings of course he throws a split there first pitch away and he continues to go away there with the fastball there with the breaking ball to get to the 2 1 and he stayed away 2 1 with another breaking ball 3 1 he throws it by him Alex was a little late 3 2 he kept he speeds his bat up at 83 after throwing a fastball by him and he hits one in the hole and if Cano wasn't running possibly a double play Cano running though Alex puts it in play gives the Yankees a lead so a has been hit by a pitch and scored. Now he drives in a run with the grounder. And the Yankees have the lead. A lot of the teams in front of them in the wild card race won today. Every game so big for the Yankees with just 40 left, including tonight. That ball stays fair. Granderson retired and the inning is over. But the Yankees push across the go ahead run. 3 2 going to the bottom of the third.
go to the bottom of the third. A big week of Major League Baseball on ESPN and ESPN2. Tomorrow night, the Red Sox are out in San Francisco. Monday night baseball presented by USAA, the Sox and the Giants at 10 Eastern. Wednesday night baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. The Rays and the Orioles in a very big series. Both of those teams in contention right now. And then we'll have the Red Sox and Dodgers for you one week from tonight. Sunday night baseball presented by Taco Bell. So on Wednesday night when you see the Orioles, you're going to see the major league leader in home runs. And guess what? He hit another one today. Chris Davis has 45 home runs. Sunday night you'll see the ridiculously hot Dodgers, even for the loss to the Phillies, 42 and 9 in their last 51. We've got all kinds of storylines brewing around Major League Baseball right now. Let's talk American League MVP candidates. Is it a two-horse race, guys? And who do you like? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, they're both having great years. I don't think anybody on earth is having a year like Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, yeah I, go I, with, mean, I go with Cabrera, yeah. too. It can, just think of it this way. To win the Triple Crown one year and have a better year than and next not, year. And not win the, and maybe the, not the yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, the Davis story is a phenomenal one, a good yeah. one. Shane Victorino takes a strike. The Tigers won today, beat Kansas City 6-3. Max Scherzer won his 18th game of the season. Baltimore on the strength of that home run by Chris Davis. They were victorious today. Beat Colorado 7-2. That's a fair ball into the left field corner. Victorino racing into second base and in there easily with a big turn too. It took Soriano a while to find that ball down in the corner. You see that a lot at Fenway. Lead off double Victorino. So this this is where uh, CC Sabathia's life as a pitcher has changed being able to throw a fastball on a fastball count and get less than optimal contact. He can't do that. And so when you can't do that you can't work in the middle lane of the home plate. You have to move to the corners and I always call them good misses when you miss you miss to the side you're throwing to. If you don't you end up giving up hard hit balls like that. Lead off double. I chain Victorino's a guy that just he. he he sits on fastball seemingly every pitch, and when you throw him one middle, middle or middle in, he gets a good part of the bat on it. Now the book on him is is off speed him to death because of that high leg kick. CC comes in tonight having given up 64 extra base hits, which is third most in the AL, and then that's one of the signs that that's what happens right there. When your stuff diminishes a little bit, you don't get the ball to the corners. The ball gets hit harder, more consistent. Here's Pedroia. Takes a slider for his strike. Pedroia hit a fly ball to left field his first time up. One of the issues for Sabathia when you talk about diminished stuff, he's 33 years old, but he's got a ton of miles on him. He's pitched about 2,700 innings in the big leagues, and his fastball velocity is not what it was. I mean, the numbers tell the story that he used to consistently, Kurt, be kind of a 94 to 96 guy and now he's more like a 90 to 92 guy and this is not a, a small change this is dramatic the 98 to 94 the peak thing is the biggest one to me hey I'm in trouble I'm going to reach back and throw a ball 98 you've got a, a very big target to miss in 94 not so much and look at the opponent's batting average it's just it's a natural trend yeah, and those numbers are on fastball so he's hitters are hitting him at a 313 clip on fastballs this year not on all pitches. Pedroia lunges for one and skies it into shallow center. But Krucky, you've talked about it. When a guy doesn't have as much of a fastball, if you can worry about the fastball a little bit less, you can do more damage against the other pitchers. Yeah, and it's like it's like Kurt said, it's a natural progression as guys get older. You know, with Dwight Gooden, you know, when I faced Dwight Gooden in 1986, you had to respect his fastball on every pitch in the at bat. And not that you don't respect CC's fastball, but you know that you can set on maybe his slider and still still get the, a foul ball off his off his fastball if he throws it because you're not worried about him throwing it by you anymore when you don't have to respect 94 95 it makes your job a lot easier as a hitter it's not easy but it makes it easier here's Ortiz Inside of the knees for ball one. Uh, the challenge, Dan, is, is that up until about five starts ago, he was starting to adjust to the new CC. He was pitching with the stuff he had. He could still win a lot of games, 
but you, when you go into a rut with this kind of stuff, you go into a, a much different kind of rut than you do when you're throwing the ball 98. So what are the adjustments? Now there's 94 on the on the black with the fastball. Yeah, Great pitch, but what are the adjustments? Well, the, the number one is I have to be finer. I have to command my fastball more. And the problem is he walked six guys in his last start, and he did. So he's not commanding his fastball better. He knows that though. He knew that coming out of spring training, talking about being a little bit different pitcher. The, the biggest change though. Is his, his, his ability? He has to use his pitch, all of his pitches much quicker now than he ever had to as a young pitcher. So let's let's talk about you in your prime. You would withhold some pitches till fourth, fifth inning, maybe. I didn't, didn't show a or, slider yeah. curveball till fifth or sixth inning, and so when I I would go first through a lineup, it would be fastball split. And and you saw both these guys tonight break out almost all four pitches within the first eight to ten hitters or eight to ten pitches. Three and one. And Prucky is a hitter. How much? How much could you sense? Hey, pitcher's not what he used to be. I got a shot here. I might not have used to have had. Yeah, well, it it makes life a little easier, yeah. and, and you can see that the first hitter, the at bat, if his fastball's popping, uh, you know, then you think, oh, 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 this could be a long day. But you know, you can see it in, in pitchers as they get older that it's not coming out of their hand as good. It's not popping the glove like it used to in warmups, and you, know, you you feel so much more confident when you go in the batter's box. If you don't think a guy can throw a ball past you, I, I had games where I would tell myself, I'm going to go out and throw fastballs away, use nothing but fastballs until I get a base runner. Sometimes that was two pitches. Bouncer to first, and that'll get a run home. Victorino in to score, and the game is tied. Well, I know this is a question that, that I've asked you guys about. It is, is 91 that different from 94, which is that different? From 96, but as you look at overall major league numbers and what major league hitters hit off fastballs of different velocity, that, that tells a pretty big story, right there. Well, and that, that for me was always a number. 95 as a pitcher. I don't know about Johnny as a hitter, but <laughs> 95 was always the difference maker. Yeah, and, and look, we're, I'm not saying that hitting 91 to 94 is, is easy, but when you're throwing 96, 97, you know there's something left in the tank in a key situation. You can get it up to 98. You know, you have to respect that, and that's the thing. You don't know when he's going to break that one out. Remember last year, Justin <laughs> Verlander, yep. you know, throwing 90 the first inning, second inning, third inning, throwing 91, 92, gets in a jam in the sixth, he's throwing 100. Then he backs it down to 90, 91, and then in the eighth, if he needs it again, he can go back up to 98, 99. As a hitter, you just don't know when that's coming. That's what I was talking about going to the well, right? Going to the well. When I went to the well, I would I would want to go from 94 to 96 to 99, 98. I only want to be able to have to do that maybe two or three times a night. He doesn't have the ability to go to that 98 well anymore, so he's got to adjust. 95 right there. That's, that's about as hard a pitch as he's thrown all season. The numbers that we have suggest that he came into this game having thrown two pitches at 95 the entire season. Yeah, he's thrown. Well, and listen, this is a different game. This is, the Yankee Red Sox game is a different game. And maybe Dempster upset him. Oh boy. Brian missed that one. He's called a good game. He, he generally does call, call a good game. Yeah, I want. Yeah, that's a good pitch. But see, that's 95, and then he throws that. You can't pull the trigger. You're Johnny Gomes. That's why you take it and hope he calls it a ball. Long throw for A Rod. In time to get him. Inning over. Game tied again here at Fenway.
Presented by Taco Bell. Fenway Park into Boston. The Yankees and the Red Sox tied up at three. A Rod in the middle of it tonight after being hit by a pitch, drilled on a 3 0 pitch by Ryan Dempster. And really, uh, Alex Rodriguez tonight on the field and off the field for many, many days now. As Joe Girardi got tossed in the middle of it all tonight for arguing that Dempster should have been tossed. A Rod just can't stay out of the headlines. There has been so much going on ever since the biogenesis story came out and now all kinds of. As I said at the beginning of the show mudslinging between a rods camp his new lawyer. The Yankees. Major League Baseball and every time you think the story may be nearing an end and other layers uncovered and other layers uncovered and now you just don't know where it's going to end. When will the appeal be heard will he have his suspension reduced at all. A lot of players and opposing teams have come out and said he shouldn't be allowed to play. Allegations from his camp that perhaps the Yankees knew he was seriously injured and kept that information from him, allowing him to play hurt in the playoffs last year. Uh, an allegation that Joe Girardi has strongly denied. A 60 Minutes report that A Rod's inner circle, somebody in his inner circle, leaked the names of Ryan Abron and a teammate of Alex Rodriguez's, Francisco Cervelli. Their connection with Biogenesis on and on and on. You just you just never know what's coming next. <laughs> Three and two, the count on Eduardo Nunez. On the surface, as we mentioned off the top, both Joe Girardi and the rest of the Yankee players seem to be handling what has to be a distraction really, really well right now. They they need the potential production of Alex Rodriguez, even if he's nowhere near what he used to be. His production thus far has been significantly better than what they were getting at third base. This ball is ripped off the monster. Nunez the big turn but that's a long Fenway single to get the Yankee fourth started there are some new developments today if you haven't heard down to Buster. Yeah as we heard a couple days ago from Alex Rodriguez he predicted jokingly that there would be more things coming out well today general manager Brian Cashman told reporters that he's no longer comfortable speaking with Alex Rodriguez because of the possibility that there may be a forthcoming lawsuit so quite literally Alex Rodriguez and the Yankees front office have stopped speaking. Remember, he's owed $86 million for the next four years. You guys have heard about marriages held together for the sake of the children. This is a marriage held together for the sake of the contract. Amazing that a player can play for a team when the management of the player aren't talking. And the player's lawyer, Joseph Takapina is his name, recently hired by A-Rod. And the player's lawyer is making some very, very strong accusations against the Yankees. Yankee President Randy Levine has responded in kind. We all remember what Brian Cashman, the general manager of the Yankees, said a few weeks ago towards A Rod. And the saga continues. The recently hired lawyer for Alex Rodriguez, Joseph Takapina, saying, quote, the Yankees did things and acted in a way that is downright terrifying. They rolled him out there like an invalid, talking about the playoffs last year, and it made him look like he was finished as a ball player, implying that they played him when they knew he was seriously hurt. Again, an allegation that Yankee manager Joe Girardi strongly denied, saying he had no inkling that there was something wrong with Alex Rodriguez. Randy Levine, the president of the Yankees, short and sweet. He better put up or shut up. And meanwhile, also heard from today Rob Manfred the MLB executive vice president the bottom line is this he has yet to see Alex Rodriguez or anybody in his camp say that Rodriguez did not use performance enhancing drugs saying that they've adopted a strategy to create a circus type atmosphere so with all that going on guys I don't know how I ask you just for your thought because it's there's so many angles to this but correct where are you sitting on all this 
Well, I, you know, I'd like to know who told Alex's lawyer that they rolled him out like an invalid. I mean, it, you know, I'm sure he, Joe Girardi didn't tell him that. I'm sure no one in the Yankees front office told him that. And, you know, you wonder if Alex told him that, you know, that they might have done that to me to make me look bad. Because you would do that if you wanted to get rid of a guy on the last year of his contract. A reason why not to, not that you would ever do that. I'm sorry. I'm not saying the Yankees did that, but, you know, usually you would, the guys on the end of his contract, you would say that about him. Uh, a guy that, you know, he, you know, you know he, he's, this is why they didn't want him back. He's still locked in for four more years. Yep. It's not like the Yankees can get rid of him. So that's what I mean. Who told them that all this? You know, who told his lawyers to come out with this? Because, you know, you just, I don't think, well, I guess lawyers would do that. But I just can't see someone just throwing that out just to try to stir the pot. Because the pot's already been stirred. <laughs> Has it ever? Yeah, and it's yeah. done. The cooking's done. <laughs> you know, it's ready to eat. You know, go to this arbitration hearing or let an arbiter decide what's going on. But, you know, this stuff, like, if, if, if Alex believes half this stuff that his lawyer's saying is true, if you're Alex, why would you want to play for the Yankees? And if you're Robinson Cano, why would you want to play for the Yankees? Why would you want to re-sign here if they think if you're hurt, they're going to run you out there? That's why I can't believe any team, any team worth anything in the world, the Yankees are the most storied team in, in, in baseball history, in sports history. I don't think they would throw a player out there to injure him more and, and not help them and knowing that he can't help you win a game. I just don't think they would do that. Especially in the postseason. Chris Stewart with a fly ball to left and caught on the track by Gomes. Nunez back to second, two down. Shill, your thoughts? Yeah, what he said. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, 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 in, I'm just uh, stunned that each day that goes by, it, it takes on a new level of absurdity. I can't. The bigger, the biggest point out of all this for me is if you're not Alex Rodriguez, you're another Yankee, or you're a free agent this winter, why on earth would you want to come to this organization? Their, their ownership, whether well, you're mad at your players or not, you don't throw them out under the bus publicly. That, the, 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 when you look at good organizations, they generally tend to ha handle this stuff as much as they can in-house. And they've not had an issue at all with throwing this guy out there and making him look worse and worse and worse. And he's done all this, a lot of it to himself, so. Brett Gardner. Six inside the ball one. Buster? Yeah, and guys, I've wondered as this thing has played along, how would George Steinbrenner have handled this? And I'm sure that the younger George Steinbrenner, in his first 15 years as owner of the Yankees, I wonder if he just would have cut him just to avoid the whole issue and said, look, we'll give you the check, we'll let you go, but we're not going to have this go on and on and on, where the Yankees right now are clearly in a position where they're, uh, because they are holding this together only because of the contract. On the one hand, you you probably imagine that he and the contract, especially the contract, would probably just go away. But right now, in this moment, they need him. They're yeah. not getting anything else at third base. They need him to play right. Yeah, now. when you have uh, pitching staffs in the National League, the Cubs had more home runs than Yankees third baseman. That tells you how desperately they needed some production out of the third base position. And look, whether he hits well or not, it, it, you know, if he hits 270 and, and hits a few home runs and drives in some runs, it's better than what they had, but he's still a presence. It's still Alex Rodriguez. You still have to respect that as a hitter that, you know, when's it, it could it click this at bat for him. And and that's what they, you know, and that's that's why it's so, you know, you know as a former player, it's disheartening that, that the ownership side would join in a battle of words with an attorney. You know, just, you know, everyone just let it go and let it all play out and see where it ends. Because, you know, an arbiter is going to decide this thing, whether what, no matter what an attorney says, no matter what the Yankees say. It's not ending soon, though. No, we're going to be able to talk about it for a while. But that's the unfortunate part, not just for the Yankees, but for baseball. Yep. There's so many awesome stories going on in the game. Chris Davis, the Pirates, and all the things that this is front page. And in a sense, we're all complicit in it because we're the ones that, 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 that people want to hear about. It. People want to want the tablet part of this. Old foul by Gardner. And uh, the other thing that I get from this is that if you watch his press conferences, I, 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 they make me uncomfortable, but he clearly functions very well in an environment that is an enormous amount of white noise. 
guess you get used to it after all these years. It's been noisy for a while. Although this is about as much noise you would imagine as there has ever been surrounding it. Well, the challenge most of it is self created. Yes. That's what, yeah, aside from the hip injury, all this stuff that's going on now is was created by Alex if, if you know, these biogenesis reports are all true, which apparently they are. I mean, he's not, he's never denied it. None of his attorneys have denied that he used PEDs over the last couple of years. Yeah, it, it, even, even if they, even if the suspension is up, is upheld and he gets the 211 games, it's never going to end. That would take it into 2015. Gardner pops it up. And the inning is over. To the bottom of the fourth at Fenway, Yankees and Red Sox tied at three. Good seats at Fenway Park. Watching his Yankees take on the Red Sox. Tied at three as we go to the bottom of the fourth here at Fenway. Each team's won one game so far. The Red Sox a game and a half up on Tampa Bay. The Rays victorious earlier today against Toronto. The Yankees six and a half out of the wild card. Eight and a half out of the East. Coincidentally, just for the purpose of information, in 1978, the Yankees were eight and a half back of Boston with 40 to go. And that was the year they came back and won it in a playoff here at Fenway. They're eight and a half back with 40 to go now. Wasn't there a home run hit? What was his Bucky something? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a different <laughs> middle name here than he does in he's, New York. He's got the same middle name that Aaron Boone has. He absolutely, yeah. I think he was Boone he was named after him, actually. <laughs> Two of my former teammates closed it and caught the last out. Goose Gossage, Drake Nettles. <laughs> To Lamacchio hooks one down the left field line. That's a fair ball off the monster. And the Red Sox catcher is in a second with his 33rd double of the season. Oh, two. Good and buried. 
Salto Maki's had two pretty good at bats. Look at how he kept kept his head down right there. Just the perfect V from the bat to up to the shoulders. Right, that's why he has how many doubles, Dan? 33. 33. Larry Bird. <laughs> As a baseball fan, I absolutely love that camera. Watching hitters swing on yeah. that camera is something but, special. But you wonder why the fingers on our top hands are achy to this day with arthritis. You see that vibration go through. Nava gets a bunt down. Someone better cover home. <laughs> they all now four of them are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes guys get become spectators and they forget what's happening. I, I guarantee if that was someone like Ellsbury or, or a healthy Shane Victorino, they would have made a bigger turn and given that a look. And this is actually once the catcher picks the ball up, this is on on me as a pitcher to to make sure that every base has a player. And a great job by Nava getting him over. Probably didn't think he could hit the ball the other way on CC. But once Stewart gets that ball, CC's got to be going to home. Yeah, Stewart's the first guy who realized <laughs> he had to yeah. get back. Yeah, wait a second. If I'm here and you're here and you're here, who's there? The runner at third, one out, infield in now for the Yankees. Tie game here in the fourth, and the batter is Stephen Drew, who grounded out his first time up. Drew hot lately, hitting 325 in his last 21 games coming into this one. Well, let's run that that sequence a little bit deeper on the appeal. He did swing, so the count is 0 and 2. So this is a little bit later in the sequence from the blimp. Wow, this is great. This is cool. You see that okay. Stewart gets the ball. Cano's covering over Bay and CC are standing right. There we go. <laughs> hey, someone get home. <laughs> they all start running home. I think we need you up in the blimp at some point before the end of the year, Crookie. Yeah, I don't think so. Backpedaling Soriano. Tagging Salta Lamacchia. Red Sox take the lead. Get him on, get him over, get him in. I think um, from CeCe's perspective, more importantly, you've seen the 2 0 2 counts. That, you, you've got to go, and I think he is going for a strikeout right there. And could get a leadoff double, and then and then that's the situation where you actually go after a strikeout. Good night for Salta Lamaki. A single, a double, a run driven in, and a run scored. Boston back on top in the seesaw affair. Here's Will Middlebrooks. Right center. Deep. Gone. That's the yeah. one that they were yep. talking about. If he, can, if he can keep from cutting the fastball, and he cut it right into the barrel, Will Middlebrooks. And John Farrell told us what's changed with Middlebrooks. He said he's, he's staying center in the other way and not pulling off balls. First at bat, he pulled off at the grounder. That at bat, he stays on it and drives one to right field for a home run. So 27th home run surrendered by CC Sabathia this year. He had never given up more than 22 in a season before this year.
Zero to ball and two strikes on Ellsbury, who's walked and struck out. So the Red Sox led two to nothing. The Yankees came back and tied it, but an inning later they took the lead. The Red Sox tied it in the bottom of the third, and now they've given Ryan Dempster a two run lead with a couple of runs here in the bottom of the fourth. Like we've seen a lot of two strike foul balls when the Red Sox have been up there tonight against Sabathia. Yeah, they battle and battle and battle, and you know, and, and again, you know, CC's made a couple mistakes on 0-2 pitches to Stephen Drew, allowing him to hit the sacrifice fly to left field. He buried a slider that he checked swung. He got the call on the 0-1 pitch and he tried to throw another one. He left it over the center of the plate and let Drew hit it in the outfield. And the inning is over. Well, the Red Sox are back on top. Got a sack fly by Drew to take the lead and added to it. But Will Middlebrooks drove one the other way to deep right center. His 10th home run of the season. At the end of four here with the Fenway, Boston back on top. Red Sox up five to three. The Red Sox leading the Yankees 5 to 3. Dan Schulman, John Kruk, Kurt Schilling, Buster Olney. And Ichiro taking a strike from Ryan Dempster. Ichiro, Robinson Cano, Alfonso Soriano, and if anybody reaches, Alex Rodriguez here in the Yankee fifth. And a liner to second, one down. Between innings, our Buster Olney with Red Sox manager John Farrell. John, what do you make of what happened when Ryan Dempster hit Alex Rodriguez? Well, Buster, as we've seen on, on a number of starts, uh, you know, um, Ryan, Ryan's going to establish his fastball into some right handers. He did it with Stewart. He was trying to establish his fastball in, into Rodriguez and, and another right hander in that lineup. Uh, he's got to keep guys from getting out over the plate to make his split and his slider that much more effective. Obviously, the pitch got away from him. Now, the umpire felt 
enough to warn both teams against. If he did it in that spot, if he did it on purpose, how is you as his manager feel about that? Well, uh, again, uh, Brian Onora, you know, issued the warning based on what he interpreted. Uh, we didn't feel in our dugout that was anything intentional. So uh, that being said, uh, you know, we, we've got to keep the momentum on our side. It obviously gave them a breath of fresh air and injected some life in them. We've got to temper that. John, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, difficult situation and, and to be fair, tough questions for a manager to answer during a ball game with uh, John Farrell being asked to assess the uh, Ryan Dempster hit by pitch of Alex Rodriguez earlier tonight. I would tell you that those that's some of the stuff he learned coaching under Terry Francona. That was a very Francona like response which in that that's all you can do right there. He's covering his he's protecting a pitcher who he knows intentionally threw at a hitter but that's what, how you have to react to it as a manager. Meanwhile a very quick two outs for Dempster here in the Yankee fifth inning and he faces Soriano who's 0 for 2 tonight ground out in a fly out. Soriano recently surpassing 2000 career hits. And is nearing 400 career home runs. He's at 397. Yeah, I actually thought Dempster was on the 400 pitch pace here after the fourth inning. But this two quick outs on, on four pitches is a huge lift for him here in the fifth. One and two. Looks like a quick inning for Dempster. Three up and three down. A Rod will have to wait to the bottom of the fifth. Red Sox five, Yankees three. Fenway, this would be your vantage point. There's Al Alfonso Soriano, and the rest of the view you get from the monster here in Boston. Make Sunday extra special by going out to the ballpark. Go to MLB.com slash Sunday to find special ticket offers. MLB.tv celebrating 11 years. Watch every out of market regular season game live on your favorite supported mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv Premium. Visit MLB.tv for details. Strike taken by Shane Victorino to get us going here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 
Victorino has singled, doubled, and scored a couple of runs. He'll be followed by Dustin Pedroia and then David Ortiz. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Here he is in the 0 2 count again. Gave up the double to Salta Lamacchia on an 0 2, but gets Victorino to ground out. So it gets the leadoff man. For just the second time in five innings, and now we'll face Dustin Pedroia, who's 0 for 2. We were talking about this between innings. I, I'm almost inclined to agree with Crocky here. If he gets Pedroia, I think Ortiz might be his guy. Retribution for the yep. the A Rod situation. Yep. Think it's in the back of his mind. I, I don't know. I I I think he he knew going out whether he was going to do it there or not. But he's at 60 69 pitches. He's he, if their bullpens rested and okay. Yeah, maybe it's a, it's something you do, but I think you have to do it at some point. Pedroia playing outstanding defense this year. Turned 30 yesterday on with a new eight-year contract he signed recently. You never know how things turn out, obviously, but looks like a lifer in a Red Sox uniform. And by his admission, he wants to be a lifer for the Boston Red Sox. General Manager Ben Sherrington looking on. Executive of the year. <laughs> I, uh, he's yep. done a great yep. job with this team. I mean, you think about your closer goes down in Hammerhead. The guy you thought was your setup guy who could close and was a, was a good, great closer at one point with Oakland. Bailey goes down. And he still has yeah. a guy down there doing a great job. And they changed the whole chemistry and vibe yeah. of the whole team, right? Uh, in less know, than a year. Yeah. On the other side, if you're thinking about competitors for that, it might be the guy in the other dugout. But what Cashman has done, what Brian Cashman has done to keep them where they are after all they've been through has been pretty amazing. Yeah. They got some value early out of Hafner. They got some value mostly early out of Vernon Wells. Lyle Overbay's played most of the season for them. To his left, spins, fires, and pulls over Bay off the bag. We will wait for the scoring. Nunez had been charged with 10 errors in 61 games coming in tonight, but that's been scored a base hit for Pedroia. We are in Boston, my friend. Good to be home. <laughs> I mean, it was a great play by Nunez to get to the ball. The 360 spin is what probably gives Pedroia the base hit on this because he made it look spectacular. If you look at that, if he throws it anywhere close to Overbay, Pedroia is out. But that's what you should get at home. <laughs> I mean, he's three steps away when Overbay catches the ball, but hey, we're in Boston. Give him a knock. Big swing and a miss by Ortiz. Pretty sure he can't throw that one again. I saw that one well.
Feels like more than 77, doesn't it? And a 77 is a lot for four and a third, but it feels like even more than that with as hard as he's had to work most well, of the time. Well, he went 27 first inning. The ninth pitch second inning was huge for him. Two, two 15 pitch innings back to back. The bottom half of both lineups has not been running up counts, which has been big for him. The Dempster wasn't getting to be out. Field line, fair ball, and into the stands for a ground rule double that will stop Pedroia at third. When you watch this at bat, with pitch by pitch, what first pitch, muscle up fastball, middle, middle, got it by him. Then he threw, I thought it was a good start. David laid off. Tried to go back to it, give him a chase, couldn't do it. Not many left-handed hitters in the game. I, I don't know, Craig, you can speak to this. I never saw left-handed hitters being able to keep this ball A fair and hit it that far. Yeah, that's the hardest part, is is you know getting the barrel on it's not that not that hard to do. It's it, like Kurt said, hooking it. And I, you know, for CC Sabathia's sake, he's lucky he didn't hook it, because if he did, it would have been a home run around the pole. Well, that's the ball when it's at 96. That's the ball that ends up being in the first baseman's glove. Johnny Gomes pops it up for Nunez, two down. A very big out for CC Sabathia. Interesting that the infield was playing back, down two runs. And if they weren't playing back, that could have been a base hit. Uh, and it's the subtle things. He's at 12 pitches, he's got two runners on him, one out. One pitch later, he's got two outs and he's a pitch away from me down the inning. Instead of maybe a 28 pitch inning, he could have a 14. But he's got to get a hitter he hasn't been able to get tonight. Jared Salter Lamacchia, RBI single in the first, then double to left in the fourth. Yeah, this is the guy who'd be careful with. Nob is not as good a right handed as he is left. Would you think about putting him on? I would. I mean, he's had two great at bats. He's hit the changeup and the fastball. He's only had one other pitch. Slider low ball one. Unless you trust your catcher that he can block your ball in the dirt and you have a feeling that South of the Machia could get a little bit over anxious with runners in scoring position and chase out of the zone. Well, that, I mean, it's a pitch right here. That's what I'm doing. I'm feeding on the anxiety of the hitter if, if that's what he is to me. And maybe one more pitch, ball. Now you might want to put him on. You give it two shots. Now you might want to put him on. Right. Th that becomes a trust issue. Hey, listen, I I'm not going to make you intensely walk him, but I need you to pitch around him. Remember, Joe Girardi has been ejected from the game. You were looking at Tony Pena, the bench coach, who's the acting manager, alongside Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach. Ball three. Turning him loose, but now nah, they're going to walk him. I think Tony just mentioned. Looked like Tony Payne just motioned to Stewart to walk him. All's quiet in the Yankee bullpen. And there's ball four. Things you could always count on about the New York Yankees was CC Sabathia was the ace, the horse, the stud, whatever you wanted to call him. I mean, great numbers over the last four years, deep into games, a ton of innings, delivering wins. But and Kurt, we talked about this diminished stuff this year, diminished velocity this year, and the numbers have, have reflected that. Uh, but I would take this guy seven yep. days a week yep. and twice on Sunday. He is a he's a competitor. Then. Uh, Aside from that, might be one of the kindest human beings yes. you could ever meet. Big Teddy Bear. Uh, met him as a young pitcher when he was with Cleveland. Incredible competitive drive. Wants to be an ace. I thought everything you needed to know about CeCe Sabathia, when he went to Milwaukee in that trade, I thought he was just the, the animal, the horse, yeah. the competitor that he is. Yeah, pitching on three days Absolutely. rest. And time going deep time. in the game. Yeah. On his free agent year. Yeah. Yep. Where most guys would say, you don't know, oh, I'm backing off here. 
He said, give me the ball, and he got him there. If I'm the Yankees, he's been worth every penny yep. to date. Bases loaded, two out, Daniel Nava. Nava's crooked shit hitting from his weaker side, the right side. Nava's got 10 home runs this year, but none of them in his last 129 at bats. Pedroia at third, Ortiz at second, Salta Lamacchia at first. As a pitcher, this guy, this kind of a hitter in this situation presented a challenge. This kind of a hitter in what respect? He is a patient young hitter. He sees pitches. He obviously has a very good awareness of the strike zone. So I'm not relying on him to chase a ball that maybe other young hitters would. So I have to get him out in the strike zone. And as CC Sabathi right here, I know this is the game. Going to the well. This is the game right here. This is, if he gets a hit, I'm I'm losing this game. There, Rothschild continuing to check the numbers. Still nobody up in the Yankee pen. <laughs> You're trying to find any chart somewhere that tells you something <laughs> good about this situation. Missed away, ball three, and a pitch away from walking in a run. Ringing down on the pen. And he did walk in a run. David Huff up in the Yankee bullpen. Well, you 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 intentionally walk the hitter because you you're, you're not concerned about the walk. And last start he had six. Four tonight, one of them intentional. Although he fell behind three and zero on that intentional walk, still scored as an intentional walk. Here's Stephen Drews grounded out and had a sack fly. Sudden, you can come back and do that. Well, I think he thought he, a couple of the balls he threw that last at bat were, were strikes. Yes, he did, and the inning is over. Well, the Red Sox had another run. Sabathia walks it in. The end of five here, but to Fenway, the Red Sox lead the Yankees six to three.
Taco Bell is brought to you by the makers of One a Day Men's, the official multivitamin of MLB specially formulated for men. And the all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, which proudly supports the craft of baseball. Learn more at ChevyBaseball.com. With Kurt Schilling, John Crock, Buster Only, I'm Dan Schulman. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, presented by Taco Bell. The Red Sox up 6-3 to three on the Yankees as we go to the sixth inning and leading it off for New York. Alex Rodriguez. By a pitch, if you weren't with us back in the second, Dempster threw one behind his knees on the first pitch, came inside on the second and third, and then hit him in the midsection. Might have hit his arm and then into the ribs. Drilled him on the last pitch. Benches, bullpens emptied briefly. Joe Girardi ejected for arguing that Ryan Dempster should have been ejected. Instead, warnings were given. No retribution from CC Sabathia. Second at bat, A Rod drove in a run on a ground ball. It's a deep drive, straightaway center field, and gone! He's hit a lot of them in his career, but I bet you enjoyed that one more than most. Oof. Undoubtedly. Yeah, and he hit it. And you don't think the Yankees need that in their lineup? Second on the season for A Rod. The Yankees down two. He's doubled and grounded out. Dempster covering in time. First, first pitch of the at bat was up in the zone. Here's the second one by Dempster, the home run pitch. It just looks like a two seamer. Middle, middle. Middle, middle. And you know, you can time that one pretty good, but the swing, uh, you know, this is why the guy has 600 and some odd home runs. See how he keeps that right elbow tucked into the rib cage. Like I said with Salto Mike, the head down, the perfect V, and the extension after the after contact, and that's, that's how come he can hit it so far. Inside of Nunez. The eventful night for Alex Rodriguez continues. His home run has made it a two run game here in the sixth inning at Fenway. Boston bullpen now busy. Left hander Drake Britton has started throwing. Dempster at 95 pitches, working with one out here in the sixth. Nunez, an RBI single in the second, had another base hit in the fourth. He's also stolen a couple of bases tonight. Two. 
looked like he was taking that pitch all the way. Like he didn't even, there wasn't yeah. even an attempt to even want to swing. 3 1 count. Yeah, I don't know. You got that wall 290 feet away. I think I'm taking a shot at it. And there he goes. And it's off the wall. And Nunez has his third hit of the game. Well, getting back to the home run hit by Alex Rodriguez, we talked extensively about the whole situation a little bit earlier. But one angle we haven't touched on tonight is that a lot of other players have spoken out and said he shouldn't be allowed to play pending the appeal. A number of the players who have spoken out happen to be members of the Boston Red Sox. Now, it is within the framework of the collective bargaining agreement that a first time offender, and A Rod is considered a first time offender because. Is it a mission about steroid use while well, the Texas predated the steroid testing program in baseball John Alaki says I'm not sure that's right that he's playing and, and he is not alone and this is the reason why he can still be a productive yes. player he can still impact a pennant race. Yeah and that's what the, the thing is not fair you think the Baltimore Orioles are happy that he's in a lineup that could you know possibly beat them in a game or overtake them in a division. Or Tampa or Boston for that matter, but you know the players agreed to this. They agreed to the collective bargaining agreement, whether you like it or not. These are the rules. He had the he had the ability to appeal, and that's what he's doing. It's also why you're going to see the rules change this winter. I think. I or, think or so too. The, soon, very soon. So that even a first-time offender cannot play pending an appeal. I, I'm not sure how the appeal process is going to work, but yeah. I do know I think there, there's going to be a much quicker death penalty, maybe second time. Ball one strike on a Lyle Overbay, a sack fly, and a strikeout. I, I don't think the players are looking him at him as a first-time offender, and, and technically, yes, he is. Yeah. But the players aren't. They're not looking at this as oh, oh wow, he just got caught. They're. Well, I think a lot of them are looking at it as a career pattern that he should be punished. For. Let's go down to Buster. Buster, what have you heard about when the appeal may be held, and, and is there any sense of what the outcome will be? On the day that he was sus uh, suspended and the appeal came down, Michael Weiner, the head of the Players Association, told reporters that this would be something that would go on in the offseason in all likelihood. Now, by rule, this is supposed to happen in 45 days, but this case is so complicated, which is why Michael Weiner told reporters it was going to take a long time to arbitrate. So it sounds like there's a very good possibility he'll play out the season. As Overbay lines run into right field, a base hit. Nunez up to second. Here come the Yankees. Britain is ready. And now. The trainer for the Yankees is out to take a look at Nunez at second base. You know, just to touch on that again, real quick. I, I was trying to think of it from Alex's perspective. I got to believe if uh, if one of the the Yankee pitchers ends up retaliating, it's going to have to feel good to finally have somebody sticking up for you, regardless of when that opportunity arises. Rob Thompson, the third base coach, out talking to Nunez. Now comes the acting manager, Tony Pena. But when he hit that ball up the wall, you see him stopping right here, and he tries to get back to the base, and he has a, you know, looks like an awkward slide where he jammed his foot, and you can see him step up, look like he sprained his right ankle getting back to first base. It's one thing he rarely practices: sliding back into first base, feet first. Not that it should be any more difficult than any other base, but <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Talked his way into staying in the game. Yeah, well, if he hits a base hit, he can't score on yeah. a single. Uh, Mr. Pena is not going to be real happy. And it looks like last batter here for Dempster. Now three left handed batters do up after Stewart and the left handed Britton ready in the pen. Dempster facing Chris Stewart. That would be the third pitch he's seen all night. 
what you're trying to say is he hasn't had a quality at bat yet. Can't believe he took it. Are you over there tracking every bat? Oh, how many pitches are taken? I'm charting a little bit like I charted when wow. I pitched. But th that's the thing. You can't. You, he's still in this game, I think, because of the one pitches, the one pitch at bats. Dempster knows this is last batter, so going to empty the tank with everything he's got here against Stewart. And I don't know that it matters to anybody other than the pitcher, but I can tell you, six innings on the line score feels a whole lot better than five and two thirds. I know it's just one out, but it's a whole lot different. Ball three. And ball four. And that's it. Dempster will leave a bases loaded one out situation for Britain as he comes in to face the top of the Yankee order. The Alex Rodriguez home run to lead off this inning has made it a two run game. Rodriguez, sweet revenge in his mind for the hit by pitch earlier on tonight as he homers off Dempster. The My Wish series returns to Sports Center for its eighth season. See sports wishes come true for kids who battle life threatening illnesses. Tonight, the Diamondbacks change a child's life forever. The My Wish series continues tonight on Sports Center at 11 Eastern. You can watch it uh, on Watch ESPN Live and also as, uh, if Sports Center, if this game is not over by 11, and that seems like a safe bet, Sports Center will start on ESPN News. More from Fenway. The Dodgers actually lost a game today in RG3, the Sunday conversation. Meanwhile, welcome to the ball game, left-hander Drake Britton. Bases are loaded with one out. Britton last pitched Friday night, pitched the ninth inning here in a 10-3 Yankee victory, and he gave up three runs on five hits in his one inning of work.
Strike taken by Brett Gardner during the pitching change as well. Jason Nix came on to run for Eduardo Nunez, who does end up leaving the game with what looked like an ankle issue. Twelfth appearance of the season with a rookie left-hander Drake Britton. Got a live arm, also got a tough spot. They're trying to preserve this lead. And Gardner gets into one. Towards the deepest part of the park. Still in play. Two runs home, now a third, and Gardner into third base as the Yankees have taken the lead. Slider right there that didn't get down in the zone enough and away. And Gardner hits this ball. And usually Victorino tracks those down, but that ball hit at the bottom of the fence. But well, watch Gardner right here. If there's no one on base, or Stewart was, was on second base, this could be an inside the park. We see here he has to slow down. He's not sure if Stewart's going to make it home. They're going to send him home. He has to slide head first into third. But you look at the reaction. He was one of the guys. One of the more boisterous guys coming out after Alex Rodriguez got hit there in the second inning, and I'm sure that's a pretty sweet redemption for him, also. So a lot of Yankees get redemption this inning. And a Britain just giving up three of Dempster's runs, meaning the Dempster still will remain winless against the Yankees in his career. And quickly, the Red Sox have the bullpen up again. Right-hander Brandon Workman starts to throw, and he's getting ready. Presumably for Soriano and Rodriguez. First, though, it's Ichiro with Cano on deck and the infield now in for Boston. As this game has changed dramatically here in the sixth inning. <laughs> Ichiro one for three, singled and scored in the third. Crunky, how do you adjust being 30 feet closer to a hitter in a situation like this? Well, it was defensively. <laughs> Depends on who's hitting. Some of them you're holding your breath. Chopper to short. Gardner coming home. And they got him. Well, this is a contact play put on by the Yankees, hoping that you know if Ichiro does hit it on the ground, he hits one of those choppers that he that he that he hits it that stay up in the air. But this is just a one hopper to Drew. Very easy play and no chance for Gardner. Still not a fan of that play. I, I, the contact play, just you know, yeah, sometimes it works, but it has to be a perfectly hit ball for it to work. A high chopper or a ball to the right or left of the infield, and anything at an infielder, you're just giving them an out. Now, if Ichiro doesn't steal second, you don't have a man in scoring position anymore. For your best hitter. Exactly. Cano, the batter, takes outside ball one. I've never un understood the play from the standpoint of you're not fooling anybody. You're not tricking anybody. So why why would you not let the ball go through? A four-run inning for the Yankees and a much quieter crowd here at Fenway than we've seen most of the night. And I can tell you, it's not just a four-run inning. It's a four-run inning started by that guy. If you're <laughs> if you're Boston, and that's 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 a pain point. Yep. That guy being Alex Rodriguez, who led off the inning with a home run straight away center. His second of the season, back easily again. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this. I talked to Bob Gibson at length one time. Had the honor when I was a young player. He talked about drilling people. He said, "Hey, half the guys I drilled, I didn't try to, because the really good players always found a way to come back." He talked about Frank Robinson. Every time he hit him, he said, "Frank hit a home run off me in the next at bat." And I couldn't help but think about that when Alex came up in the in the set in the his next two at bats. We're gonna talk about two tough two tough guys. Bob Gibson and Frank Robinson. Imagine what those battles must. Well, have it was been funny because like, yeah? I, 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 I had to, I, it was part of an interview we were doing together, and I, he, I was such a big fan of his, so I kept I'm running out all his stats, and 
I said, you know, your reputation for hitting people. And being, he said, half the guys I hit, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to throw the ball in. And I wasn't sure whether to say, yeah, right, or. Tells you all you need to know. He's with Bob Gibson. He's telling Bob Gibson the stats. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could have come up with a hundred other questions to ask you instead of, you know, back in 68, you. <laughs> Hey man, 1.12 is 1.12. You ain't lying. <laughs> and another shocking revelation. What Robinson Cano tried to bunt. Yeah. Pulled the bat back, but uh, to me, part of it is recognizing the guy hitting behind me is the hottest plant hitter on the planet. But I'd much rather if I'm. But if you were the, if you were pitching, would you say, "Oh, good"? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here's where it's dangerous right here for Britain. Well, and here's where Cano has matured and changed. And I had a chance to face him when he was a young hitter. And one of the reasons I thought he was a, not easy to get out, but easier because he was so aggressive. He would chase so much. And he's really narrowed down his approach and narrowed down his strikes. Full count. I, I am shocked the shoes are still on Cano on that pitch. I, it, that that just screams 3-1. You know, you've got to set dead red and let it loose. Now he's scratching his head like, what, what do you think I was thinking there? Ichiro will be running. Be because Britain knows he's if he doesn't get him out, he's coming out of the game with Soriano coming up next. He'd love to throw him a slider right here, and if he makes a great pitch, he can get Cano out. Little looper base hit. And the inning continues. But the night will not continue for Britain. And this is why you don't run on contact. So the Yankees have cashed four already this inning, and John Farrell is going to back to the pen for the right hander, Brandon Workman. It started with Alex Rodriguez launching one to deep center. And then Brett Gardner with the bases clearing triple. The Yankees have the lead. Fenway Park, a four run inning is not over yet for the New York Yankees. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Right hander Brandon Workman is into the game with the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox have a lot of injuries in the pen, so that's what Britain and Workman in. getting an opportunity, eighth appearance of the season for the Red Sox for Workman. Couple of stints with the Red Sox this year made his major league debut just over a month ago. He has been both a starter and a reliever in his limited appearances for Boston this year. 
Yankees with Ichiro at second, Cano at first, two down, and Alfonso Soriano, by recent standards, having a very quiet night. He's 0 for 3. He's due and after what he's done the last five games 15 hits, five homers, 18 RBIs. Ground out in a couple of fly balls tonight off the bat of Soriano. First pitch swinging, ground ball to short, inning over. But it's a productive inning for the New York Yankees, led by A Rod and Gardner. They've got the lead. Bell. Fenway Park, Yankees seven, Red Sox six. Big four run top of the sixth inning for the Yankees. The A Rod Homer, the Brett Gardner three run triple. Remaining of the game at short, Jason Nix after running for Eduardo Nunez, who left with an apparent ankle injury. And still in the game, and conceivably in line for a win, although there's a long way to go. CC Sabathia. And for most of this night, Kurt sure didn't look like that was a possibility. No, it didn't. But this is the this is who he is from a, a makeup perspective. He knows getting deep in the game is a big deal. I still think the Drew strikeout, which seems like about three hours ago, to end the last half inning, he knows it was a huge. It ends up being an enormous out now. But this is where I felt for the last 15, 20 years, the Yankees were different because there's three and a half innings left. But one of those innings, Mariano Rivera is going to throw, so it changes the offensive perspective and the outlook. CC walks the leadoff man. Rivera making his way down to the bullpen in between innings. A rarity. Three consecutive blown saves. Although still one of the best and still a remarkable, remarkable performer at 43 years of age. Yeah, I wouldn't mind handing him the ball whenever he wanted it. But he's just been that great, that special, and still. But it, even now, he still makes managers manage differently. Top of the order, Jacoby Ellsbury. A walk and a couple of strikeouts. Now, Red Sox fans are screaming the fastball up and in, throw him out of the game, warnings have been issued. 
good no call as they say by Brian Onora. Obviously no intent given the situation. Sabathia's not throwing out of here. Well, in a one run game this late in the game you wouldn't think he would be. Especially if he walked the first hitter. Yet to throw a strike in the inning. Left hander Boone Logan, right hander Sean Kelly. Pitching coach Larry Rothschild. Rothschild told him, look, we got two righties coming up next. Even though Shane Vicarino's a switch hitter, he's only hitting right-handed these days because of that hamstring injury. Give me everything you got on this guy, and then we're going to go to our pet. Talked about his stuff. That's 11 walks in his last two starts. One, they're going to count one as intentional. Yeah. He went 3-0 before he walked. Him. Yeah. And that's the challenge for CC is to minute stuff. You got to have command. But he's battling. He's battling. Comes in 10 and 10 with a 4.66 ERA. The ace of the staff for the Yankees all year has been Hiroki Kuroda. He's got some of the best numbers that any starter in the American League has. And and Ivan Nova's come back with a vengeance recently, pitching extremely well. Andy Pettit had really been struggling, but he picked up a win Friday night. Phil Hughes is the fifth starter for the Yankees. Foul ball off the screen in front of the Yankee third base dugout. I've always looked at the Yankee young players almost as coming out, unless they're highly touted, they come up in obscurity. Brett Gardner is a very good player, but around the around from fans on the team, you don't really know who he is. Nova's actually thrown very, very well, but the Sabathias and the Jeters and the Rodriguez is tend to take. A lot of the spotlight around them away, and they develop into good players, and people got surprised. It seems sometimes the the prospects, the Yankees hype the most, don't end up becoming what they're supposed to be. And like you said, the ones who were kind of flying under the radar turn into more than people expect they will be. They they get a chance almost by accident and make the most of it. Well, it's a challenge for a team that tends to. To go out and spend a lot through free agency, and and I mean late 90s, early, early to mid 90s, they were a very deep minor league organization with the Pettits and the Jeters and those guys coming up. But they spend, and when they spend, that takes a roster spot from a guy who would be a prospect. Two two again, fouled off again. Yeah, this is his third and final trip to the well. You saw back to back 94s there. He knows it. This is a huge moment in the game, and he's given this every pitch right here is with everything he has. If he's got one good slider down the way, he better throw it here. Oh. Down and in, but the slider catches the inside corner for a strike, much to the dismay of Jacoby Ellsbury. Sometimes the back door slider, the outside slider that comes in the front door is the best pitch in the world. Here's CC's last pitch of the game. Tony Pena coming to get him, and that's a nasty pitch right there. Even though because of the where he was locating his fastball in on Ellsbury, so Ellsbury had to respect it, and he throws a slider away. Gets him looking. Sean Kelly, the right hand over to the game. Sabathia leaves with a one run lead here in the sixth.
night long, but somehow found a way to hang around long enough and got enough offense to lead with a lead. 7 6, bottom six, runner at first, one out right hander, Sean Kelly. <laughs> facing Shane Victorino, who didn't like the call. Victorino batting for the right side exclusively these days because of a hamstring injury. Does not feel as comfortable, can't get enough power, enough of a base underneath him for the left side, so he's batting righty all the way. The Yankees know it, so they bring the righty in to face him. And the on deck hitter, Dustin Pedroia. And Kelly has been a fine for the Yankees this year. Picked up in the offseason from Seattle for a minor leaguer. Got some very good numbers. And has been nasty against right handed hitters. Yeah, those are actually ridiculously good numbers. And this is where a switch hitter who has to bat right hand due to injury. This is where his issue is. He struggles with breaking balls anyway against left handed pitching when he's batting right handed. But you know, when you don't see this for however many years he's been switch hitting, it's it's remarkable that he had a decent pass at the one breaking ball that he was thrown. Kelly gets him. Well, Kurt, break down CC Sabathia's night. It was not easy. Well, listen, the line score is not pretty. He's not going to be happy with two huge at bats. Last inning, when he had the base load, he five pitch walk. He comes back and makes three nasty pitches to get Drew out and kind of preserve, not give up a quick number, keep the game. Now they jump ahead. This last, this at bat against, against Ellsbury, these are the pitches that set up pretty much a slider in the middle. Jamming him, jamming him, jamming him. That ball's in the middle of the plate, but he can't leak to it because he's got. Those those two pitches in front of that. Outstanding job to finish that. That that's again, that's who he is from a makeup. He's not happy about the line score, but he left his team got a chance to win the game. That's a crooked numbers, as they say, but as you say, could wind up with a W. Responsible for Middlebrooks at first. Two down the batter, Pedroya. And a quick go and two count. It's at 12 base runners and five and two I mean that's that's not who he is. And the, again, I, I I went through something like this is not fun. You don't enjoy this, but if your team can find a way to win when you're struggling and battling, you go to bed and you go to sleep pretty good at night. And the game is so important for both teams. The Red Sox trying to hold off Tampa Bay atop the division. The Yankees just trying to scratch and claw their way back into any kind of a, a playoff race. Eight and a half out of the East, six and a half out of the wild card race. Cano gobbles it up, and the inning is over. End of six at Fenway in this back and forth affair. A Rod's going to lead it off. Yankees up by one.
seventh. An eventful night for Alex Rodriguez to say the least. Drilled on a 3 0 pitch by Ryan Dempster. Joe Girardi ejected because Dempster wasn't ejected. And then in the sixth inning, two at bats later, it's A Rod who drills one straight away center field. And lots of emotion for Alex Rodriguez as he rounds the bases, hitting a home run off Dempster. Now he leads off his seventh. Facing Brandon Workman. 7 6 New York. Both the hit by pitch, which resulted in the bullpens and benches emptying briefly, and the home run. You could see the energy in the Yankees. You could see it on the field. You could see it in the in the dugout. But Joe Girardi came up fired up. Brett Gardner came up, came out fired up. And, yeah, and this is something that, you know, Kurt, you well know. This could really jumpstart a team. This reminds me of the game in 04 when we we were possibly not going to play and and all the things happened and Alex ended up getting hit and then Billy Miller hits a walk off off Mariano and, and a couple days later we kind of got propelled. They look like they're full of life and some energy tonight. Another hit for Rodriguez. Alex came back when he first came back from the hip injury. You could tell he was trying to swing more with his upper body. We didn't trust that left hip, but watch how that left hip is clearing now, and he's getting more of the bat, the barrel of the bat to the ball, where before he was trying to force power with his upper body and not using those hips. But look at that left hip fire out now. That's that tells you that he's that he's starting to feel comfortable. He's trusting that the hip is fine and he's letting it go. That home run to center also tell you that too. Big swing and a miss by Curtis Granderson, who has doubled and grounded out twice. The Yankees off tomorrow. They've got the Blue Jays for a doubleheader on Tuesday. The Red Sox are in San Francisco tomorrow night. Game you can see on ESPN 2. Granderson telling A Rod, stay right there. I think actually half of the Red Sox rotation is in San Francisco now. Yes, uh, I think John Lester and Jake Peavy are are both there already. As is David Ross. Apparently, he's going to come off the DL. He's been on the DL with a concussion. Probably get a start tomorrow. David Peavy, Ross. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Red Sox instead of flying tonight and landing there in the wee hours of the morning, they're going to sleep at home tonight and then fly tomorrow. And to get to San Francisco kind of early to mid afternoon, go right to the ballpark. Probable starters tomorrow night on ESPN 2, John Lester and Tim Lincecum. Those Lincecum numbers don't look too pretty, but he's starting to find it. Making those adjustments. He is. Yep. Chopper left side. There's one. Not in time at first. That's five six on the put out at second base. Now A Rod getting a little extra attention on his way back to the third base dugout. Because of the shift, you see where Middlebrooks is playing normal shortstop position, and Stephen Drew has to has to take the throw, and Alex peels off right there. I think that with with his dislike for the Red Sox tonight, he might have taken a shot at Drew cleanly. A strike to Jason Nix. I bet you Drew was thinking the same yeah, thing. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't get a lot of free ones. Next coming on as a pinch runner for Eduardo Nunez, who left with an injury. It looked like an ankle injury a couple of innings ago. Stays in the game at short. Derek Jeter's name a little bit earlier. He's down at the Yankees complex in Tampa. As the runner goes, pitch swung on and missed. Throw down, not in time. Yankees are in a running mood tonight. Nunez had a couple earlier. Now Granderson. Well, they have to. You saw that. You know, I mean, you said the stats. Last in slugging percentage. That means they're not hitting a lot of balls out of the ballpark. 
they have to get these jumps. And, you know, Workman, even though his leg kicks is pretty quick, you watch his arm. It he has a kind of a hitch in his delivery, and that gives you that extra second right there for Granderson to get in. And Saltamaki threw it on the short base, shortstop side of the base. Petey did try to sell that tag, though, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Blocked by Salta Lamacchia. One ball, two strikes. And I, I mocked and made foot. This is an art. I, and I, I didn't realize this. I played with Cal Ripken and watched it. He practiced that in the wintertime. That, that slap tag, get the glove up. A lot of times you don't even have to touch the runner. You just got to get the glove down and up. There's an art to it. Park, lots of electricity in the ballpark all night long here tonight as the Yankees and Red Sox try to settle this three game series. Yankees winning on Friday night, the Red Sox winning yesterday. And they, they're pretty deep in the middle infield. Pedroy is trying to jockey Granderson back with one out. They're not really keeping him that close. He can get a, such a huge lead. And that's all for Knicks. And now with two outs, it's seemingly irrelevant. John Farrell's back on his way out to the mound. Got the left-hander Franklin Morales ready in the pen, and left-hand hitting Lyle Overbay do up. I am. And he has made the move. Those tuning in looking for Sports Center, it's coming your way over on ESPN News. We are here at Fenway Park. Yankees and Red Sox on Sunday Night Baseball. The left hander Morales on his way in with the Yankees up 7 to 6 in the seventh. Presented by Taco Bell is brought to you by Audi Truth in Engineering. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great. Xerox. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. And Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Dan Schulman, John Cruck, Kurt Schilling, Buster Olney. And the whole crew for Sunday Night Baseball here at Fenway. Seventh inning. Yankees seven, Red Sox six. Left hander Franklin Morales is into the game now for Boston. Face the left hand hitting Lyle Overbay, who is not going to bat as the Yankees have summoned a pinch hitter. But first, Morales, who has spent a lot of time in the minors this year. He was on the DL as well, had a couple of stints on the DL, just activated a week ago, making his eighth appearance of the season with Boston, and he will not face Overbay. He will face a very frequent acquisition. 
for the New York Yankees. Mark Reynolds is up to hit. He homered in his first at bat as a Yankee. And he has a lot of power. A lot of swings and misses. But a lot of power. Get that home run Friday night in his first at bat here at Fenway. This is a guy who, who, from a scouting, a pitching scouting perspective, he's got holes. You got to throw your fastball to him if you're going to throw it, because if you're just a thrower, a hard thrower, he's going to find a way to put a ball in the seats. Reynolds was with Cleveland earlier this year before him being designated for assignment. Recently, he's had some huge power years, including a 44 home run season for Arizona back in 2009. He's hit 30 or more on two other occasions. He was also struck out 200 or more times in three separate seasons. But the Yankees have been in desperate need of some right handed power. They got Soriano, and he's obviously done the job. They've got A Rod back. Now they've got Reynolds to try to be a compliment for Overbay at first base. Reynolds can also play third. As we uh, showed you, one for 12, though, with six strikeouts in his career against Morales. Little Flair's going to drop in and score a run. Granderson crosses the plate, and the Yankees now lead 8 to 6. Spinning slider. It didn't look like it did anything, well, but he still got in on him. He jammed him just up. He yeah, and, and that, yeah. And the way they were playing the ship, that was the worst yep. thing to do is jamming because yep. when you get jammed, you usually hit it up the, either the center or the other way. Now Chris Stewart over two with a walk. Hey. The Red Sox were up six to three. The Yankees with four in the sixth on a home run by Alex Rodriguez and a three run triple by Brett Gardner. Now they had a run with a big two out base hit by Mark Reynolds here in the seventh. Stewart sends a ball high and deep left center field but caught on the track by Ellsbury to end the inning. Seventh inning stretch at Fenway Yankees eight Red Sox six.
busy Sunday in baseball around the major leagues, and it's not over yet. Bottom of the seventh here for the Fenway as we check out the game track. Both CC Sabathia and Ryan Dempster labored their way into the sixth inning. Sabathia's got a shot at a win here tonight. And Alex Rodriguez drilled by Dempster in the second, homered off Dempster in the sixth. The big reason why the Yankees have an eight to six lead is they try to take the series and pick up a very important win for them, both psychologically, you would think, and in the standings. They can ill afford to let anything slip away if they're going to make a run at the playoff spot. Mark Reynolds stays in the game at first base after pitch hitting for Milo. And the pitcher for the Yankees is veteran left hander Boone Logan, making his 51st appearance of the season already, but he is. One of your true left handed specialists, just 33 and two thirds. Look at the strikeout to walk ratio, show 45 over 10 so far this year for Logan. But power, power, and, and their whole bullpen has been one of the reasons why you're they're eight and a half and not 18 and a half. And with the that they have been. Like I said, the last three innings of the game against the Yankees has always been different because of the, the guy, you know, the guy that's getting the last three outs. That's the guy there. Yes. Some bumps in the road recently. If they got a safe situation tonight. He's obviously the guy. Still having a great year. The overall number is still great. Even with the three recent world saves. It'll be David Ortiz, Johnny Gomes, and Jared Saltalamaki. Ortiz tonight walked in the first, drove in a run on a ground ball in the third, and hit a ground rule double in the fifth. Foul ball. Interesting to me how many just watching the game in between pitches, how many baseballs that Yankee CC threw out a bunch. Boom Logan just threw out that ball. Every umpire rubs them up different, don't they? <laughs> one one. Oh. Pulled foul again by Ortiz. <laughs> One and two on a big poppy. I think he wanted that one. <laughs> I think he was sounded like he wanted a different result. Mm -hmm. He knows he missed it. And Logan gets him. And Ortiz. One angry guy. Every time I got a guy, you could hear that from the mound. The, how upset he was about missing the last one. You know he's he's feeling good in the ground. I, I needed to make a pitch here. If I could throw it in that same spot, I knew I was going to get a swing. Making it go, he wanted to make it go down in the strike zone in that same spot. He did. He made a good pitch right there. It's 95 too, running down and in. On doesn't his, doesn't hurt that it's 95. If you like that stuff. Now Johnny Gomes 0 for 2 and a sack fly. So Sabathia goes 5 and a third. gives up 6 earned runs. Got a chance to get the win. Dempster goes 5 and a third. gave up 7 earned runs. 3 of them scored after he left the game. As Drake Britton allowed the bases clearing triple to Brett Gardner. Dempster could get saddled with a loss here tonight. The, one of the more telling numbers out of those two num two lines, 210 combined pitches. And neither guy got through the six. Nope. I wonder why it's only the bottom of the seventh at <laughs> midnight. Ball three. They're hanging in there though. They don't mind staying up late. 
Well, that's because you know in a Yankee Red Sox game, until the 27th, that was made, something can happen. Yeah. Is that the right time? Oh, and maybe a cross up there as Stewart didn't catch that, and that one hit Onora flush. I don't know that Chris Stewart even got a piece of that. Well, we saw a little professional courtesy earlier tonight when Onora took care of Stewart. Now it's the other way around, and you hope they didn't get him up in the throat. Oh, man. Wow. I don't know how this was. A, this couldn't be a cross up. It's 3 0. You just missed it? Well, and thank goodness it looks like the throat protector took part of the impact, but it certainly didn't take it all. Intricate signs no. with no one on base. Nobody on three on the corner yeah. fastball. Yeah. Tying run at the plate. Jared Saltalamakia. Ground ball to short. And the Yankees turn it and end the inning. Seven of the books to defend away. Yankees eight. Red Sox six. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And apart by the all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, which proudly supports the craft of baseball. Learn more at ChevyBaseball.com. And Travelocity. The world is waiting. Go and smell the roses. On to the eighth inning here at Fenway with the Yankees still leading the Red Sox by a score of eight to six. Aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. John Cruck, Kurt Schilling, Buster Olney, I'm Dan Schulman. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. 
And in front of a packed house at Fenway, the Yankees come up in the eighth inning. Brett Gardner, one of the biggest hits of the night, maybe the biggest hit of the night. The three run triple in the sixth. Facing Franklin Morales. That hit turned a 6 4 deficit into a 7 6 lead. Yankees, as we mentioned earlier, have 31 of their last 40 games against, including tonight, against divisional opponents, against teams from the American League East. No team in baseball will play more games against its own division down the stretch than the New York Yankees. They play seven more after tonight against the Red Sox, six against the Rays, seven against the Orioles, and ten against the last place Blue Jays. As Morales misses up and in. The Yankees with a chance to maybe do some damage against a couple of teams they're chasing or trying to chase down the, the Rays and Orioles, not to mention the Red Sox. They're also eight and one against Toronto this year. Big swing and a miss by Gardner, two and two. The Red Sox, meanwhile, we mentioned they go west to San Francisco and LA this week, and then they go to Colorado in the last week of the season for a two game series. They got a lot of games in National League parks still to come. Nichi Tozawa is up in the Red Sox pen. So for the Red Sox, one concern, guys, is they're going to lose David Ortiz's bat at times. Coming up, John Farrell telling us he'd like to get Ortiz into three or four of the six games that they'll have coming up in San Francisco and Los Angeles yeah. as a first baseman. Yeah, and you know he, he mentioned it, and we asked Kurt. Yeah, he's he's an adequate enough first baseman that would get by, but you have to have that bat in the lineup as much as you can. And I mean, he can play first. It's just he's obviously what you expect from a range perspective. And that curveball hits Gardner. Let's go back to uh, the incident where Brian Onora was hit. Watch and listen and to Brian Onora taking one right in the throat. Still getting it done through the pain, telling everybody it's ball four. That's a man there. Yep. My, my job is more important. If he didn't have that throat protector on, that could have been. Good oh, punt by Ichiro. Knock. Not even a throw. Yankees at first and second. How about that Yankee baseball, huh? <laughs> hit by pitch, a bunt for a hit, steal a base. Just to jump back to that, that oh North, that was a very awkward thing. Everything about that was awkward. Nothing awkward about that bunt no, though by Ichiro, and, and you know you had to be expecting lefty on lefty. There's probably going to be a sacrifice, and that's a sacrifice. That's not a bunt for a base hit. He squared, he squared it around early. He brought the bat around early enough that that you could charge, but he put it in such a perfect spot that there's nothing anyone can do. So the Yankees up 8 6 and threatening again. First and second, nobody out here in the eighth. Robinson Cano is the batter. He's three for four. And maybe he'll bunt with the Yankees' new offensive game plan. Takes outside of ball one. Ichiro with his second hit of the night on that bunt single. We mentioned a little bit earlier, he's closing in on a milestone. Getting some attention here, getting a ton of attention in Japan. If you combine his hits in Japanese professional baseball in here, he's now 3,997. <laughs> there for a strike. And the way this game's going, he could get four, five, six <laughs> more at bats in it. That no one's ever got their 4,000th hit at four in the morning. I would think. <laughs> My guess. You don't think Rose or Cobb did? Nope. Might be immediately followed by the Red Sox flight to San Francisco <laughs> at 10 a.m. <laughs> well, 
Well, as baseball fans know, and as Kurt knows better than a lot of people, have played <laughs> in a lot of these games. Yankee Red Sox games are rarely quick. The numbers back that up. Over the last 10 seasons, the average Yankee Red Sox game has been 31 minutes longer than the average Major League game. That 322 would have been a quick one, I think, when I was. I, 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 listen, it's a 143 game baseball season and a 19 game NFL season. <laughs> this, every one of these series games right here is played like a Sunday Patriot game. Three and so, one. So it's your fault. Well, yeah, it is. Sure. But you know what? It's part of the beauty of playing here. That you don't get this. Any we had people lining up at five o'clock in the morning for spring training games against the Yankees. But but that's a special thing to be a part of. And the fans in both ballparks make it very memorable. And a full count on Cano. I think it Onora again. No, that got salty that got on the salt floor. Lock, yeah. 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 Sports Center currently airing on ESPN News, and you'll see it here on ESPN at the conclusion of the ball game. You'll get more from Fenway Park, all the latest surrounding the Yankees and Red Sox. The Dodgers lost today, beaten by the Phillies, as Ryan Sandberg gets his first major league win as a manager in the Sunday conversation with RG3. Swings and misses for out number one. And with a couple of righties coming up, that means John Farrell's on his way back out to the mound. That's all for Franklin Morales. Junichi Tazawa will come in to face Alfonso Soriano and Alex Rodriguez. Franklin Morales gets Cano, and he'll leave a two on, one out situation for Tazawa, the Yankees. Leading and looking for more here in the top of the eighth.
Sox game. A little drama, a little controversy, a little offense, a lot of pitches. And it's still going here in the eighth inning with the Yankees leading the Red Sox eight to six, out hitting them 14 to seven. The fifth pitcher of the night for Boston is right hander Junichi Tazawa, who will face Alfonso Soriano with two on and one out. Tazawa and Koji Uehara, two very important pieces of the Red Sox pen. Remember the injuries to the likes of Joel Hanrahan, Andrew Bailey, Andrew Miller, and Tazawa with some very good numbers. 60 walks and or 60 strikeouts rather and nine walks this season. And what's wrong with Alfonso Soriano. He's in a slump taking too many pitches. <laughs> After tearing it up 15 for 22 five homers his last five games 0 for 4 tonight still hit the 682 though. <laughs> 0 for 4. Ugh. That's one of the things about these these Red Sox Yankee games. You can go 0 for 8 and have it all be in one game. <laughs> Before the seventh. Yeah. And you can go 0 for 6 and still have a chance to win a ball game <laughs> in the ninth inning, right? <laughs> you can you yeah. can make five outs and still have a three hit day. Yeah. Fastball up and away at 95, ball two. It's like a little league game. You got a kid whose shoe, shoelaces untied. Couldn't have tied him in the bullpen. <laughs> no one would have saw him. He just, that pitch he threw, I think he came untied right there. <laughs> hey, like a hitter coming out of his yep. shoes. I mean, he looks up on the board, sees a guy's hitting 660 something. <laughs> Better come up with something pretty special. Great speed on for the Yankees. Gardner at second, each your road first. Foul ball. I want to see the know the difference between the bat Alfonso Soriano uses and the rest of baseball. 34 35 inch 34 ounce he got jammed it didn't break <laughs> it lives to see another pitch is that about as heavy and long a bat as anybody is using a baseball I would imagine yeah. Yeah. The, yeah I mean the last yeah the last guy swinging that was like Paul Bunyan <laughs> so where how does he do it how does a guy who looks like he weighs 180 pounds hey, how look how big the head way? of the bat is all he does is drop it it's just all the weights in the head of the bat he throws that thing Have you ever witnessed that yeah, he uh, he hit a home run off me in the game, I think, in 01. Yeah. Tonight, hit by a pitch and scored in the second. Grounded out, drove in a run in the third. Homered in the sixth, singled in the seventh. And Pedroia doesn't get him. Ball came up on him in his midsection, couldn't make the play, couldn't find it. A-Rod is safe in the inning, continues. Well, this is a tough one here because he got jammed. There's a lot of spit on that ball. And you see it how it, how it deflected off the glove, then off the hand of Pedroia. And then when it hit his hand, it bounced so far away from him, he didn't have time to, to make up that ground. Alex Wagner is really running hard out of the box. As soon as he saw Pedroia drop it, though, he turned it on. That's gonna come back to haunt him. That scored a hit. 
Pedroia, I can't give him an error. Wow. Playing in Boston. Wow. It's a good scorekeeper. Here's Granderson. Believe it or not, that, I mean, it's something that players talk about as far as scorekeepers. As he had hit his hand and it rolled down his leg, yeah. and he didn't see where the ball was, and he kind of needed it out in front of him and couldn't couldn't make <laughs> up the ground. And I bet you Petey would tell you that was an error. Hundred percent. But the problem is that. It all it only works if everybody's home scorekeeper does the same thing. One guy can screw the whole system up. Zala takes something off one and one. He's only committed four errors this season, but he'd be the first to tell you that should be the fifth. Either way, leaves the door open for the Yankees to do more damage here in the top of the eighth. I'm expecting you're going to see another one of those. This plate is feeling good right now. I think he can elevate the fastball right here just to get, give him something to look at. You could. I wouldn't, but you could. Fastball at 96, splitter at 88. Well, and he was on that fast. The only reason yeah. I don't throw that there is he, Kurt Curtis is such a good fastball hitter that I don't want to give him a chance. I know the split's going to be at the bottom of the zone, and I know it's going to be a ball. Yeah, I'm talking above the white line. Right. No. Oh, yeah. K yep. zone. Yep. But that's that's not a pit. That's the hardest pitch in the game to throw. Is that fastball up out of the zone in that little slot that, that the hitter chases because you don't practice it. Nope. He overthrew that one. Yeah, he did. And it, for I always felt as a right-hander, the the fastball into either a right or a left-handed hitter was the fast pitch you wanted to throw before a good split. So a fastball away, well, and then a split. No, fastball in and then a split because away, if you if you get the hitter leaning away or thinking away, especially a lefty, he'll lean out and drop the bat head. When you come with a good fastball in. Their first step is is to protect in. Yeah, but he threw the fastball away. Yep. Granderson yep. and then came back with a split away. He's got to throw it one more time, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I, two if need be. Gardner almost halfway down the line Ooh. as Granderson takes down and in. Ball three, and now the runners will be on the move. Faces loaded, two outs. Gardner will be heading down the line from third. Ichiro from second, and A Rod from first. That's the one that would get me. That there's no no planet he should have taken that pitch on. It looked good the whole way in, and he took it. Now I got to throw a fastball here. And this is where a fastball could lock him up because yep. he might be sitting on split. Throws a fastball at the knees, he could take it. Popped him up. Draws a crowd. Gomes and left to end the inning as the Yankees leave the bases loaded. To the bottom of the eighth at Fenway. Boston coming up down a couple.
Night baseball on ESPN of the Yankees still leading eight to six over the Red Sox as the Sox come up in the bottom of the eighth and a better setup man. In a major league baseball in recent years, right-handed David Robertson is on for the 55th time this year. Sub two ERA, great strikeout to walk ratio. And as we take a look at Hot Zone brought to you by T-Mobile, we can see that he is awfully tough on left-handed batters. Yeah, and that cutter is the is the pitch of of, of choice for David Robertson. Learned from Mariano Rivera. And you can see the up in the zone center. That's probably the one he tries to overthrow, get a little more maybe cut on it, and he leaves it up and it's and it stays flat and lefties can see that one but everything else is pretty nasty. So after all the back and forth and lead changes tonight as far as the Yankees are concerned they've gotten into the eighth inning they got Robertson on the mound. They've got Rivera for the ninth so the situation stay the same as it is right now. But remember the Red Sox are one of the best offensive teams in baseball just Barely behind the Tigers for the most runs per game in the majors so far this year. And as everybody who has played at Fenway, watched games at Fenway knows, it is to, to quote Yogi Berra, it ain't over till it's over at Fenway Park. You never know until that last down is recorded. So many crazy things have happened in this ballpark in the late innings. Nava Drew Middlebrook, 789, facing Robertson. Sharp breaking ball for a strike. That's one of the pitches that makes that that hot cold you saw blue at the bottom. Mid 90s guy, you got to respect the fastball, the lefty. You got to be able to throw a ball down out of the zone. We were talking about this when CC came out of the game. That 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 transition to Mo in the ninth inning. You don't like that bridge to be three innings what long. But these relievers have done a, have done it pitch after pitch so far, hitter after hitter. Too. <laughs> Is that Sports Center? <laughs> uh, sorry. Guys or girls, I had to say that. Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. Stewart down to Reynolds for out number one. We were talking earlier. CC struggled. CC had an outing that wasn't Sabathia like, but their bullpen. Pitcher after pitcher, big at bats, big situations. Got Kelly coming in, making some big pitches, getting getting a chase, getting a ground ball from Petey to the to the lefty Logan gets oh. David, obviously anxious, makes a great pitch there, and then probably if you're looking at the last couple innings, pitch of the game, last couple innings gets a a double play ball, huge double play ball, and now you got this. <laughs> his stuff is just filthy. Just filthy, but you saw the curt that blue we talked about on the on the uh, the hot cold. You saw him get a chase below on the bottom of the strike zone because the cutter keeps him off the ball in the middle and the fastball in as well. So Mariano Rivera is starting to limber up out of the Yankees bullpen. Three consecutive blown saves. Yeah, the one thing you know for sure, it didn't rattle him. He's, he's going to come no. in with the same stuff, same demeanor, same confidence, same poise that he's always had. Just missed. So I'm out in the concourse today. We were going through our managers' meetings, just speaking to a couple Red Sox employees. Ho oh, hum! You wouldn't even know who no. it was if you if you didn't actually take a good look. You'd have thought he was a very unassuming man. You know the the word that keeps coming to mind when I think about what he's done, and who he is, and what he's done this year is genuine. He is a gen. Everything is uh, what you see is real, and that to me is as impressive as anything. What he's done at, at each visiting ballpark when he goes there for the last time, he has kind of a little town hall session. I think it's with twenty. Employees of that organization, and, and 
you know, just just average average Joes, people that are that are picked by the people in that city. He just talks to them, shares some time with them. Swing and a miss by Drew, and basically thanks them for the consideration and 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 the hospitality they have shown him. And the Yankees have one more trip to Fenway Park, so he'll do that in September when they're back here for the last time. And we'll be back here then. That's four weeks from tonight, I believe. September the 15th, Yankees and Red Sox. That will be our Sunday night game. We've got the Red Sox and Dodgers next week. Do we have any pull to make that a 7 o'clock start? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you the players would be all for that. Sent foul down the right side by Middlebrooks. On the Mariana Rivera farewell tour this year, he has received an Anaheim. He got a self portrait. Trevor Hoffman. That's funny. <laughs> got a boy well, down in Texas. Boy, that looks a little out of place. Broken bat. A rocking chair of broken bats. I thought that was the best. That one. is a that great was one. awesome. That's great. Although seeing him in the cowboy hat and boots was pretty That's, cool yeah. too. <laughs> I think uh, it was Ron Gardenhire's idea for the. Broken bat rocking chair. He actually might have broken a couple of Guardy's bats back at the beginning <laughs> of his career. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the boots. That's John Wetland. That's three pretty good closers yeah, yeah. right That's there. Wetland, good. Rivera, yeah. and Nathan. Yeah. It's about 2.6 million saves. <laughs> Down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Middlebrooks into second base. He's doubled and a homer tonight. And is now 12 for 26 since returning from the minors. Look like a curveball right it, there yep. by David yeah, Robertson. Is. Which, uh, you know, seems to be able to give a hitter a chance. I think he was trying to do what he did the first two hitters, which is bury that curveball below the zone bounce. He got two chases out of it. Left that ball up, and Will looks, if anything, he looks confident. Well, he's, you know, with the Glacius gone now, there's no one to look over his shoulder, really. So he, he knows he's going to play, and it just relaxed him. Is what John Farrell told us. Jacoby Ellsbury fouls one off. I don't imagine it happened much in your career. You ever punch out four times in a game? We're just a playoff game, yeah. But <laughs> okay. thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> we won, though. Yeah. I don't imagine Jacoby would have a whole lot of four punch out games in his career. Uh, and the tying run at the plate for the Red Sox. Two down in the eighth inning. Wild pitch, Middlebrooks to third. Mm. It's just a hard cutter that he that Robertson buried, but that's a ball catcher. Not that I'm a catcher, but they have to get over and not try to glove it, but try to block it. Keep your chest down to the ground and let it hit and create that angle where the ball hits your chest and just bounces straight down. You try to glove it. If you don't catch it perfect, it's going to bounce away like that. These games have to be tough on catchers, too. Down there for probably 180 pitches in some of these Yankee Red Sox games. Uh, the umpire's down there for 600 pitches. Yeah. <laughs> I would so they could fix that if they called more strikes. <laughs> like that orange though on Stewart's nails. Good luck, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you should be able to see it. Yeah, orange is his color. Got him. Boy, a nasty curveball from Robertson who ran the inning. Robertson does his job in the eighth. Eight in the books at Fenway. And the Yankees lead eight to six.
in need of as many wins as they can get to try to get it back into contention. Up eight to six on the Red Sox. Alex Rodriguez and Brett Gardner. Two of the big forces in the game tonight for the Yankees. Ruby De La Rosa becomes the sixth pitcher of the night for the Red Sox. And he was a part of that enormous trade with the Dodgers. And this is a guy who can bring it. 97, 98 miles an hour. Bottom third of the order for the Yankees. Knicks, Reynolds, and Stewart looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Victorino, Pedroia, and Ortiz do up for the Red Sox. And you know who will be pitching for the Yankees. Well, you know who will be pitching for the Yankees. Robertson. He's hot. <laughs> Or maybe 42. Possibly. Next came on as a pinch runner for Eduardo Nunez, who, by the way, the official injury, we are told, is a strained left hamstring. Some discomfort in his left hamstring. So, although he jammed that right ankle, it looked like at a first base, it's the left hamstring that is apparently the issue. Nix came on to run for him and then struck out in his first plate appearance of the seventh inning. The all time saves leader, Mariano Rivera. Good call, Dan. <laughs> he, looks, uh, he looks tense. Yes. Yeah. Very nervous. Butterflies. She's done. <laughs> she is done. I've had enough. <laughs> Down the left field line, but foul. What do you think that guy was rating himself against when he had the best husband ever shirt on? <laughs> His buddies that are with him. Yeah, the guy sleeping next to him. Yeah. What? They maybe he is. Yeah, two Yankee fans. You know how many times I saw like one with one and one with the other husband mm -hmm. Yankee. Right? Yeah. I was like, I don't know how that works. Ooh, Knicks gets hit. Well, Mariana Rivera warming up in for a possible save situation, depending on what happens here in the top of the ninth inning. Three straight blown saves. First time in his career, Kruk. He gave up the. Base hit to Adam Dunn and take us through these two games wow, against Detroit. Leaked over the middle and the pitch to Detroit. You get some Gail Cabrera. Uh, those are just pitches that, you know, most normal human beings would pop up or roll over, but not Miguel Cabrera. And then that was just a cutter that didn't run in enough on Victor Martinez, and he took him out. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he made three mistakes to three great. Well, you know, Adam Dunn can do some damage, but, you know, Miguel Cabrera, you know. Sorry, he's the best hitter in the world. Mm -hmm. it, you know, he got him a couple times. Victor Martinez understands what it takes to drive in runs. I can I can tell you this. In, in, in when I think back over 20 years, I have four or five very vivid images. When Alfonso Soriano hit the home run off me in the 2001 World Series, I, the first thing I remember was turning to my left. And as I'm turning left, I can remember seeing Mo getting up to take his jacket off. And my thought was, we just lost the World Series. Because Mo doesn't blow saves in October. Where's number 42? He's got 42 career postseason saves. I was probably as impressed as anything after that. The composure, the grace. Yeah. Just the genuine, yep. genuinely humble guy who... Still believe he was the greatest ever at his position in sports. Swing and a miss by Mark Reynolds.
All time leader in saves, all time leader in postseason saves, five World Series championships, MVP of the 99 World Series. Hmm. Wonder if he'll get into Cooper's down. <laughs> The staggering thing, all with one pitch. That, 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 that's the part I don't think people, you, you can hear it and say it, but I don't think people can grasp what that means. No one's ever done it before, other than knuckleballers. No one's ever done it. A lot of closers come in with you know, stomping and snorting and attitude, and, and, all, and he just jogs he's in. He's the most unassuming guy he, in the ballpark. He jogs yeah. in, breaks your bat, and goes home yeah. with the save. Did you did you talk to him on show in, in games against him? No, I, I talked to him a couple different times. Very very, just a couple times. Um, and again, I, that was why the, the word genuine. He was everything you think he is, I and mean, everything I've heard from his teammates says the same thing. Bouncer to third. And Reynolds retired back to second. It goes Knicks one down. Sports Center follows the ball game tonight, which is almost tomorrow. Here on ESPN, currently airing on ESPN News. More from Fenway Park. The Dodgers lose a game today. The Phillies beat them three to two in the Sunday conversation with RG3. Here's Chris Stewart, 0 for 3 with a walk. Another thing about Mariano, you know, to pitch all these years in this fishbowl that is New York. And have you ever heard one negative thing said or written about him on radio, newspaper, anywhere? anywhere? And to be a Yankee, the stature that he is, and to be liked, to be universally respected, and generally liked by visiting fans, by fans. Everybody. Of, yeah. Players and fans, everybody. Yeah, that says something about him. When he's here, for the last time, if he pitches in the game next month in the last Sunday, they'll get up and give him a standing oh, ovation yeah. here in this Absolutely. I, listen, if we got our rings in 05, opening day, and when they introduced, we were playing the Yankees, when they introduced him, him jogging out the line, they gave him a standing O. He laughed and played it. It was great. That's what you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> well, he's good natured about it, too. Huh? Yep. Because yep. he was pretty sure he was going to come in and get three outs and save that game. So, smiling. Runner goes. <laughs> Strike two, no throw. That's a pretty big base right there that he just took. Third base with one out. It's only a two run game. Taking advantage of a young pitcher late. This is a high leverage inning. He's got a lot going on. And I said it before when Granderson was out there. They, they, you know, you watch Pedro, he jockeys and then he, then he stays and he lets Knicks just get as much as they want. I mean, there's no one jockeying him back to the base. What's well, the one head turn, too? And a base hit through the drawn in infield to score Nick. Stewart drives him in to make it nine to six. Jason Nix is not not what you call a burner, but I mean he did, right. he said it. He gets one look, and then the thing is, when De La Rosa turned back, he 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 held the ball longer, and he never gave him a chance. And this is a ball right here that I mean you think sometimes that ball would hook, but it looked like that one ran away from Middlebrook. Middlebrooks. Back to the top of the order for Gardner, who had the big three-run triple in the sixth inning, one for four, also hit by a pitch on the night, and a strike from De La Rosa.
The only inning in this game in which neither team scored was the eighth. Somebody scored in every other inning. There's a base hit for Gardner. Stewart stops at second. We're a hit away from not getting the CMO tonight. One more run is a non save situation as a pitch in a while, so maybe he'd still yeah. come in. And they have an off date tomorrow. So I'm pretty sure he's going to get at least some work in. Here's Ichiro. A couple of hits tonight. Base hit to center field in the third inning and a bunt single in the eighth inning. This time a high fly ball deep center. Ellsbury back, tracks it down on the warning track. Stewart will tag and come to third. Back to first goes Gardner. First and third, two down, a run in to make it nine to six, and the batter will be Robinson Cano. Again, a Victorino, Pedroia, Ortiz due up for the Red Sox at the bottom of the ninth. A win tonight for the Yankees, and they would merely keep pace with a number of the teams ahead of them. Tampa Bay won, Oakland won, Baltimore won. They would pick up a game of the Indians and the Royals, both of whom are ahead of them in the wild card race. Ooh. Oh. And that gets Cano bounced in and hit him in the foot. Mike Slider. I guess he never thought to wear the shin guard on the outside. <laughs> that hurts. You wouldn't think that would have came into play. I mean, you're the Red Sox. You got to feel confident that with the bases loaded. After that pitch, it, yeah. he won't throw a wild pitch and score someone or two. I'm still actually surprised to see Cano walking normally after Matt Harvey hit him in the All Star game. Oh. The sound of that one was. Oof. Bases loaded for Soriano. Who is 0 for 5 tonight after being the hottest hitter on the planet coming into the game. I mean, he was due for one game where he didn't go at least two for something. <laughs> A Rod on deck. A Rod's three for four, including a home run. Oh. Everybody was just looking and waiting to see what Brian Onora would say about that. Call it inside. Blew it by him at 95, one and two. Might have been just a tad bit out of the zone up. I mean, you got to, you got to be concerned with the slider, don't you, Kirk? That he's going to spike it again. Well, yeah. I mean, as a pitching coach, I'm not sure what's because, listen, his stuff is good, but this kid is a raw thrower. He's out there throwing the ball as hard as he can throw it, which is why the slider spikes in the dirt. 
and why when the catcher sets up for a fastball down and away like he did he throws that ball middle up and in. And th this is a kid who needs to get to the point where he understands 85 percent he can still throw the ball 95. Soriano sends one to left center field. Ellsbury's there and the inning is over. The Yankees get one, leave them loaded. And a Mariano Rivera, the gate is open and the game's greatest closer will be coming in in a save situation to try to lock it up. With the two, three, four hitters, Victorino, Pedroia, and Ortiz, do up for the Boston Red Sox. Rivera taking as long as he can to getting those last few warm up pitches in. Now ready to go. They've got their cameras ready. They know they won't see this many more times. Just as we came back out of break, Mariano Rivera was announced, and Yankee fans cheering. Obviously, some Red Sox fans up and cheering as well. Thirty-five out of forty, but he's blown his last three save opportunities. We showed you those on the seventh, ninth, and eleventh of this month. Has not pitched since. And they'll come on to face Shane DeVictorino, Dustin Pedroia. And David Ortiz, it is mo time here for the Yankees. When you talk about all the things, the numbers, the accolades, all the things, the number that jumps out of me right there, the walks, the command that he's had. There have been closers that threw a lot harder than him. There have been closers that threw breaking balls that broke more. But that command of that pitch to both sides of the plate, making that cutter into four or five pitches to me has been the magic formula for him for, for the last 20 years. Remember, Victorino's got a bad right handed because of the hamstring problem. But that, but against a, against him, right? He might cut right anyway. Left -handed he might anyway. Right. Some left handed batters decided to. It might be an advantage because hitters. Shane stands yeah. so close to home play yeah. that he has no chance. I mean, you saw it in the 2009 World Series, what he did to guys like Jimmy Rollins and Shane Victorino, just shattering his bat, yeah. their bats in that World Series because if those hitters stand right on top of the plate, this might be a. Maybe Shane should have thought about this in 2009. <laughs> and there have been a, a handful of switch hitters, maybe more, who have decided to bat for the right side and try to keep that pitch away from their hands. Shockery through strike one. And it was a cutter. Yeah. Knocks it down, picks it up, throws him out. So far, the rally cap not working here at Fenway as the first batter is retired. Not not sure how many people know just how good of an athlete this guy is. One of the elite 
defenders on the mound of all time. Phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. Well, then, I know people know it, but I don't think you can say it enough. He's 43 years right. old. Right, right. <laughs> and I, honestly, I, I don't know that if he came back, he wouldn't be just as good next year. Mm -hmm. 43, but in, in perfect fielding position. You know, he doesn't fall off the mound either way. He throws his right leg comes comes set with his left foot on the on the ground, and he's in perfect fielding position. Right in on his hands, ground ball to short, two down. Yankees up nine to six, and a big reason why. Alex Rodriguez, this home run to straightaway center field off Ryan Dempster back in the sixth inning. Part of a three for four, two run score, two RBI night for tonight's Chevrolet player of the game, Alex Rodriguez. Right now, the Red Sox down to their final out after a couple of quick outs for Mariano Rivera. The batter is David Ortiz. And another strike. Sports Center comes your way next year on ESPN, and they'll be bringing it right back here live for a little post-game reaction. Red Sox and the Giants tomorrow night, 10 Eastern on ESPN2. The Yankees home to the Blue Jays for a doubleheader Tuesday. As Ortiz takes inside, two balls in the strike. Orioles and Rays Wednesday on ESPN. Red Sox and Dodgers one a week from tonight here on Sunday Night Baseball. And a base hit up the middle. Ortiz keeps it alive. Johnny Gomes will be the batter. Going to get on base any way he can to get Jared Saltalamaki to the plate as the potential tying run. Right on the corner, strike one. Just off the corner. On the appeal, no swing, a ball and a strike. Bone's got a lot of moving parts in that setup. <laughs> got a lot going on down there. I'm just not happy with the way the batting helmet feels every day. Yeah, just, yeah. Thing is, he's consistent. He does it every pitch. Mm -hmm. He's not making any less annoying. But it's not for show. I mean, he looks no, like I he know. needs to go through yeah. this. <laughs> There's a little no more Garcia Parra tonight. <laughs> Somebody broke the case on. Pretty good eye right it, yeah. there. That's it. Three and two. I always wonder sometimes if that if that's the eye or the fact that he throws him so badly he looked good taking it. Salto Lamacchia hoping for a chance. Ortiz will be running.
Alexa. Well, the Red Sox have had a lot of dramatic victories so far this season. They have pulled out a lot of games late. The most walk off wins in baseball. 19 wins in their last at bat. Do they have some magic in them here tonight? Saltalamachia could tie it with one swing of the bat. And he's swinging a good bat. Yep. At least right handed he was. He has not had any success against Mariano Rivera. So I'm guessing the numbers are logic, right? If he's never blown three in a row, he probably has right. never blown four in a row. <laughs> One and one. What are you thinking here, Crucky, if you're self Lamarckian? Cutter middle in, and I'm trying to turn and hit it around that pesky pole. And I'm opening up quick, too. Ortiz did it to him. Going away. Missing low. That's definitely something I've noticed this year. His, his cutter has much more slider tilt down than right to left to it. Left it over the middle of the plate, but gets a fly ball to left to end the ball game. Rivera gives up a hit and a walk, but gets the save as the Yankees hang on and beat the Red Sox 9 to 6. Major League Baseball continues tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, the Red Sox and the Giants on ESPN 2. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Kurt Schilling, John Crockett, Buster Olney, I'm Dan Schulman saying so long from Fenway Park.